All right, my friends, welcome to this best of seven showdown. Today we have Kark facing off against Flying Taco. A little bit out of the blue, I was just laying in bed, I was eating pickles, and I was just, you know, like, you know what? Let's have some fun, let's grab some good competitors, and let's have a showdown. Oh yeah, it's time. And thank you, Snafalophagus, for the very generous donation right out of the gates of the 750. It's pizza time. Well, I've had pizza in quite some time, but I'm a huge fan for sure, so certainly down for that. Thank you guys for joining, and I think without further ado, we're, we got people here. It's time. Let's go ahead and jump right into our first match, which is going to be a showdown between Kark and Flying Taco. Kark on the Greenskins facing off against Flying Taco on the Tomb Kings. Oh, yes. Welcome, guys. Yeah, the transition was a little bit slow off the music there, but uh, I was actually reading some messages in uh, Discord. Uh, Crystal Gamer, we do have a Discord, and I'll be dropping a link to it over the course of the stream. So you guys will have access to that and all that good, good fun stuff. Yeah, welcome, guys. Welcome. Yeah, pickles from the jar. Yeah, yeah, I'm a huge fan of pickles. They're delicious. It's kind of a strange thing, I suppose, right? A little bit phallic in its own way. So, uh, yeah. We have Felcon joining us here in the spectator slot, so he's going to be watching as well. <laughs> it's going to be fun. And H.S. Mosier says, I manage, I manage a bar and have a weird schedule, but your streams almost always line with it. Use this to buy a new robot hand. Well, perhaps I will. <laughs> the Luke Skywalker one from like the 80s or 70s. That'd be great. Thank you so much, man, for the very generous donation. Hope your bar is doing well. Business is good. It's booming. Do you show sports stuff at your bar? Like UFC, all that kind of good stuff? Ever since I started watching Terran streams, I've been seeing steel chairs everywhere I go. I know it really stands out to you when you start like using those uh, those kind of uh, references. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. All right, guys, game one, Kark and Flying Taco. Kark is most certainly known for some very unorthodox builds. I played him the other day on ladder and he brought like a massive crab rush against me with Solastra and all sorts of uh, intense stuff. So we're certainly in for a treat. Yay, work time turn streams better than actual work. Yeah, to help you get through work. That's kind of the plan for today's stream. And again, thank you guys so much for the very generous donations right out of the gates. And here we go in game one. Still recovering from all the awesome games we had with the Eternal Challenger League. It was certainly... Quite a blast. Really, really good finals there. I'm trying to get the uh, turn streams in there, but my owner won't have it. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, the other patrons probably would have no idea what was going on. They would, it would, that, would be, that would be... Oh, man. I could only imagine, like, one of my streams playing at, like, a local bar or something. And, like, you know, you just have these guys who just, you know, probably watch baseball and football and just know nothing of... of this and they're just like, what the hell? This guy's, like, talking about, like, just, like, goblins hitting things with steel chairs. It's like... Yeah, that would probably be really cringy for sure. Um, but anyways, for the Greenskin Army led by Kark, he's going to be coming in with Warzog, who's going to be dancing down here, having a good time. He's got his little squig on his back here. Pretty interesting lore tidbit about this little squig. So apparently Warzog put a hex on it. I think it was like a rival orc, and he turned him into a squig. And that squig is now like carried around on his back, which is pretty great. Very kind of reminiscent of the old world kind of game workshop humor. But So as far as spells go, he does have the Brain Busta, which is a really short cooldown spell. It does pretty good damage against skeletons and stuff like that. Plus, it also triggers the Bonewood Staff on a very short cooldown, which is great. On top of that, he has Air We Go, which is a pretty solid competitive spell. AoE effect, gives melee attack, can't complain, triggers the Bonewood Staff. Now for the front line of Kark, we have Goblins. We have Savage Orcs across the entire front line. They're just going to be regular Savage Orcs and Goblins. It looks like goblins have chevrons. Oh, AP Gloonies are over here as well, so some elite goblins, but for the most part, it's going to be basic gobos. In the back here, we've got Orc Air Boys, Duress the Errors. We have Orc Air Boys and Orc Air Boys, which is the way to go. I think the Orc Archer line is very, very good against Tomb King's constructs, and even though it doesn't say armor piercing on the tooltip, Orc Air Boys actually have okay AP values. They have six AP compared to goblins, which have like one or two, so the Orc Air Boys can certainly get some really good value in that respect. We got trolls as well. Two trolls here in the back, uh, and I like trolls. They're really good against like Tomb Scorpions and kind of uh, those Construct type units, but the issue with them being, of course, is Terror. They can get Terror routed fairly easily, but they still do some work, for sure. A little bit micro-intensive. You have to make sure they're in the right fights, but trolls can do some good work. Arachnox Spider, two Goblin Big Bosses here in the back, and that's pretty much it for Kark's Army. Not a lot of mobility. Uh, no Forest Goblin Spider Riders, things like that. It's more like mass and aggression, just going in with the Air Boys and the Spider, the Arachnox Queen, of course, and the uh, trolls in the back. Quite excited for this and for the army of Flying Taco. He has some really good assets. He has the Ushapti Grapos, which are going to be super good against the spiders and trolls. Front line is going to be Tomb Guard, and Tomb Guard honestly will do very well against uh, the AP Gloonies and like Goblins. I'm not sure how they'll trade against Savage Orcs. Should be somewhat efficient. Two Chariots on the flank, Skeleton Spears as well, Tomb Scorpion, and a couple groups of the uh, Nehekara Horsemen, which are going to be really good against that Archer line in the back. 
So Shopti Grapos, obviously they have a really easy target right here. Shooting the Arachnoc Queen is going to be incredibly efficient. So he's going to be shooting the Queen here. The Queen will be falling back. First chariots from the uh, Tomb Kings are going to be surging into the Greenskin line and buttering the bread of some of these Savage Orcs pretty bad. And that's the one thing about Kark's army is he doesn't have any Forest Goblin Spider Riders or high mass units aside from the Trolls and Spider to really stop these chariots. So you can see they're just getting so much value just going to Shrek Town on these guys. On the far side of the battlefield, the Archer Boys are able to fend off the Nekar Horsemen with the help of some Savage Orcs. And the front line of the Greenskins is going to be engaging. I suspect we're going to be getting a wall here in a second. But so far, I would say Flying Taco is getting the better of this trade. We shot the Grapo is doing a lot of damage here. Chariots are able to really penetrate into the back line. And there's not really that, you know, that many quick high mass units that are able to stop those chariots. Here in the center, it looks like there is going to be an FG of the get going down here from Kark. Very, very good play. He's able to isolate the Lord of Flying Taco, which... This could actually lose talk of the game, honestly. I think things are going very well for him in many respects, but if his Lord really gets punished here and doesn't get away, but he should be able to get away. He's taking a lot of fire directly to the face from the Rusty Errors. Of course, they have the Armor Sundering, so they're going to make uh, etc. a much better target for the other uh, Goblins and our Orc Archers here. And the back chariots are being chased off by the Arachnot Queen, which I suppose is okay, but I think that's a pretty good trade for Taco. But again, this is a Kark's Gambit here. If Kark can really take out Setra the Imperishable, I think that could actually win him the game. Because aside from that, you know, Tomb Kings are grinding out the front line pretty efficiently. The Ushapti Great Bows are in good shape. They're firing. And it's only a matter of time before they do bring down the Arachnot Queen here in the back. Now, Setra's on the run. So, so far, really good value from Kark. That Effigy of the Git paying huge dues. And you can see here that Flying Taco is going to be dropping some jukes, but thankfully for him, he is able to get away. So very, very close game here. Orc Archer line is still online. Orc Air Boys here are firing somewhat efficiently, but not for long, as they do just get sandwiched by these Bony Boys here. So the Bony Boy sandwich coming in, doing some good damage to these archers. And the spider's on the hunt, but I mean, the spider, I don't know. The spider might be a little bit better suited in the front line, pressuring the Ushapti Grapos and things like that, or going after the Tomb Scorpion. But nonetheless, it's doing its thing, and it might be able to help stabilize these archers, but I simply don't think so. So one of the Goblin Big Bosses is broken off here, and the Ushapti Great Bows are just cackling and dropping huge amounts of fire here into the Arachnor Queen. Nice Brain Buster going down from Kark right there, able to blast some of these Tomb Guard and Skeleton Warriors, or actually just Skeleton Spearmen and Warriors. I know Tomb Guard right here. And these uh, Chariots for the Tomb Kings are just doing great work, just really pressuring the back line. These Goblins are most certainly about to be rode down here, so not sure how it's going to go for those poor little lads. But nonetheless, guys, Bounce Fire is very even. And Setra, you know, has pretty good leadership as far as, like, Undead units go, and it is able to stabilize here. So there is going to be this Mobile Terror that is going to be very tough to take down for the Greenskins, especially without their, their Archers and the Arachnot Queen. So the Archers are getting taken down very quickly by the Chariots and Nekar Horsemen. There still is Troll Pound City, so there's a fair amount of Trolls here, but there's just the King Nikesh Scorpion Legion, I think. No, those are just regular Skeleton Spears. Now, all of which are going to be very good against Trolls. So Shopee Great Bulls are still all in such good shape, and it looks like Kark is going to be trying to fall back with the Arachnot Queen, maybe doing some jukes, it looks like. He's kind of going back and forth a little bit, so I, I suspect he's trying to kind of go back and forth to make sure he uh, evades that damage. In the meantime, Setra's going to be coming in, maybe doing a charge on the Savage Orcs, thinking about it, but I think a little bit wary of the Orc Arrow Boys over there, so he's most certainly going to want to be careful. But Kark does have this pit fight going on here. He's got the Goblin Big Boss and the Trolls, but like I said, Trolls can be very good in this matchup, but if they get caught in bad engagements versus terror causing you know, monsters who are supported by Spears, it's going to be a really bad day for the Trolls. So the Trolls probably going to be breaking here. Bounce Fire is still really even, and it looks like the Ushapti Summon has been dropped by Flying Taco. So the Ushapti Summon here is going to be going after Savage Orcs, which is a good target for them. Uh, could also be used to kind of pin down the Arachnox Spider, which wouldn't be bad. And it looks like some Spiderlings were used to get on the Ushapti Grapo, so maybe temporarily shutting down the fire. But it's looking pretty grim bones, guys. I mean, Wurzog here is a little bit trapped up. Uh, he's got Skeleton Spears around him, but they're all very beat up as well. So Wurzog might be able to stabilize the situation, but Flying Taco is ahead on the bounce of power. The Arachnox Spider getting this low is, is a huge situation. However, a massive amount of the bounce of power for Flying Taco is invested in his Ushapti Great Post right here. And ooh, nice FG of the gate going down here. It does a little bit of damage as well. It's not just a snare, it also does magic damage. So able to get Setra somewhat low, but there's no follow-up really here for the Greenskins. If the Trolls had stayed and fought, maybe they could have been able to actually kill Setra. But Trolls, of course, when they're this beat up, their leadership's this bad in the late game, it's going to be tough for them. So Kark looks like he's going to be pathing these trolls back in. And they're going to go after Setra. But how long is it going to be before these guys break? Setra, of course, a very powerful duelist. And, you know, even against anything, Setra just has a pretty powerful stat line there. Nar Narrow's Incantation of Protection is going to be going down. But, oh, the Goblin Big Boss from Kark's coming in. And Wurzog's coming in with the steel chair, the steel axe, whatever the hell he's wielding. But Setra is able to put the moves in Tokyo Drift away from those guys. And Setra should be A-OK -okay now. Rachnot Queen in the meantime is broken. And that's a huge loss there for Kark because now... The, uh, the Tomb King's Cav are going to be able to chase down the Arachnor Queen, no problem. They have enough speed to keep up with it, despite the bug that makes it run really fast when it breaks. But if the Goblin Big Boss can take out Setra, I mean, maybe. Wurzog's pretty powerful, for sure. I mean, Wurzog's got some uh, high melee attack, 64 right there, and Brain Bust is really good against these kind of chaffy units. 
Wurzog's going to be going in, and if he wants to, he'll certainly beat the brakes off this Necrotect. However, it looks like he's just bull rushing straight into this army, maybe to go after the Tomb Scorpion. Cetra has 727 HP. And the trolls are coming back for Kark and they're regenerating. So that is going to become a more kind of persistent threat as they do heal more. But if you look around the battlefield, not much for the greenskins. We have Orc Air Boys here. We have some goblins right here. But for the most part, the Tomb Kings have had pretty good dominance over the battlefield with their chariots. I mean, uh, Flying Tacos had outstanding micro with these bad boys. 186 kills, 175 here. And he's just been riding dirty all over the back line. And the Tomb Kings are able to win the game there. So game one is going to be going to Flying Taco in this best of seven showdown. It was a really fun one, but I, I think Kark needed like... A couple, like, maybe just cut... His archer play was really good in the beginning, for sure. I think maybe cutting a little bit on the infantry or one goblin big boss and getting two forest goblin spider riders would have been invaluable. That would have gave him some counter skirmishing against, against the horsemen, and it would have also allowed him to kind of pin down the skeleton chariots, which just ran shop on him. 190, 175. There was literally nothing stopping those things. They just went to pound town, for sure. But Kark had a couple of really good plays. His archer play in the beginning was outstanding. He was able to really snare down the Tomb King Lord, almost killed Tetra within the first, like, minute of battle. So, you know, it was back and forth for sure. I thought Kark might have a chance of coming back, but the initial kind of beatdown of the uh, the big queen here and the trolls obviously not being able to get on those juicy targets was uh, pretty tough. And the chariots running shop as well. So, game one is going to be going to Flying Taco. We are doing a pick and ban system. So it's pick and double ban, actually. Now Flying Taco's on the pick and ban. So the next map here is going to be the... Uh, let's go ahead and do the Alpine Ridge. Alpine Ridge. He didn't even wait to see the map. So he is saying, well played, good game. He picks Beastman and bans Norska and Vampirates. Okay, so Kark's on the pick now. We're going to see what he's going to go with to counter Flying Taco's Beastman. Quite excited about this. And welcome, guys, to the stream. Thank you guys so much for joining on this odd hour. But regardless, it's a pleasure to see all these familiar faces. And yeah, life is good. Life is good indeed. I can take a look at chat now. Yeah, the trolls, the trolls are good against chariots, but also trolls are quite a bit slower than chariots, so... The issue with the trolls being is that, I mean, yeah, if you get those good engagements, you can get them, but it's it's a little bit tricky if someone has really good micro, for sure. And Flying Taco's chariot play was really on point. Uh, he, he did have that one slip up in the beginning with Cetra that really could have cost him the game, but thankfully, for his sake, he was able to kind of stabilize that and, uh, you know, get in good shape there. Yes, correct. GG, indeed. <laughs> Shake it, Kark. Yeah, I see Aerocrastic uh, in here in chat, the man himself. The Ever Chosen. Secretly, this is a QSA XMT clan war. <laughs> right on. Is Kark in your clan? Yeah. That was, a, that was a really fun showdown. So Kark coming in with the vampire counts. Oh boy. You know, we haven't been seeing too many vampire count games lately. I had a really good one with Aerocrossic the other day that's going to be going up on the channel in the next couple days. But, I mean, honestly, in tournaments, I don't see them picked as much as I used to. Granted, I don't... I'm not as involved in other community tournaments outside my channel, so I'm not as sure about the metagame there, but um, at least in my Flash tournaments, Best of Sevens, Eternal Challenger Leagues, I haven't been seeing too many Vampire Count picks. Uh, we are on the Alpine Ridge, which is, you know, uh, has some tricks. I mean, some punishing terrain for missile factions, but for the Beastmen and Vampires, I don't think it's going to matter at all. Aerocrastic says, this is kind of the struggle with the big greenskin missile lines. If they don't snipe what they want, it's tough to finish things off. Yeah, it certainly is, for sure. But, I mean, the missile line was just getting ravaged by the chariots, like, and there was nothing stopping them. You saw in the late game, pretty much the chariots were at, like, full fighting capacity, like, you know, eight, nine minutes into the game, which is uh, pretty rough. <laughs> Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Uh, Luca Sharpain. This is actually a best of seven. Uh, usually my streams are best of sevens if it's just going to be focusing on two players because it uh, allows for the stream to be, like, an hour and a half to two hours, which is the sweet spot in terms of entertainment. And also the players seem to enjoy it quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, we do it. We do it to it. He banned Vampire Coast, I believe. He did not ban the Vampire Counts. So he banned Coast and Norska, if I'm not mistaken, on the picks there. Correct. Uh, did the Nehek nerf lower the Vampire Counts standing? It certainly hurt it. Right on, Arrow. Yeah, Kark's an awesome guy, for sure. I've actually uh, just talked to him about getting uh, Team Korea together for the World Cup. So very, very fun stuff. But uh, yeah, the nerf, there was a couple big nerfs to vampires. Obviously, Invocation of Nehek getting a cost increase, plus also only hitting four units. I mean, it, it was a little bit oppressive before in some ways, especially for the Vampire Coast. But, um, you know, it did affect them. I still think Vampire Counts are a competitive action. I think they're good. They have a couple bad matchups. But for the most part, I think Vampire Counts are still very good. Yeah. Yeah, very powerful counterpick faction for sure. Like, if your opponent opens up with Chaos, and even against Beastmen here, I think they have a really good matchup. Like... 
the Mortis engine play and their infantry can usually kind of sustain pretty well against Beastmen. And on top of that, you know, the Blood Knights are very good against all the Beastmen large threats like Minotaurs and, uh, you know, Centaurs and things like that if they're able to catch them. So I'm curious what Flying Taco will do. I mean, Beastmen have their own tools. You know, they have the Korox Manerpers, they have, you know, Minotaurs if they get the appropriate charge. They have cheap spears, which can screen somewhat efficiently. So, I mean, there's a multitude of ways the Beastmen can play this. I used to be a big fan of using Centaurs with throwing axes to kind of kite out the heavy assets of the Vampire Counts. But again, I think the metagame's changed quite a bit. Yeah, the short best of seven format's really fun. Correct. Correct, correct. Uh, I don't really play 3K, David the White Lizard, because I prefer multiplayer. Uh, I've often explained to people my kind of analogy as it pertains to, uh, you know, competitive gaming and whatnot. How do you fix dwarves? That's a complicated question, hell of gas, but really they just need something that can deal with like chariots and those type of units. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I prefer to hunt the more most dangerous game, you know? Like when you're hunting the AI, it's like eventually you're gonna learn it and you're gonna beat it and you can just mouth breathe all over it. That's why, I mean, yeah, it, it's it's cool. Like it's impressive to occasionally see people do legendary campaigns, but like pretty much anyone can accomplish that if they put in enough time. Whereas like multiplayer really takes like uh, a lot more skill in my opinion. And I mean, but not that I care that it requires more skill. It's more that like I like the challenge of it and that the challenge is evolving. Like if I'm playing against like, you know, Aerocrastic or someone who's really good, right? They're going to they're gonna be beating me down, giving me the business. And, you know, I have to find ways to kind of get back in and scrap. Whereas the AI is going to be predictable for the most part. And once I master it, I master it. But the ever-changing challenge of the... Uh, of the multiplayer, you know, multiplayer games in general, especially competitive ones, is very alluring and it gives me a lot of replayability and I just, I get a thrill from that. So, so that's just kind of to uh, explain there. Misha, thank you for dropping a link to the Discord. Much appreciated. And again, thanks to the mods for joining today. I see a bunch of mods in here. We get Wicked D, Misha, the gang's all here. Aerocrastic, thank you guys so much for all the work you do here and uh, helping out. <laughs> Misha dropping the cat. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, my friends, we're here in the next game. Going to stretch the feet a little bit. I ordered one of those uh, ergonomic mats, but it hasn't arrived yet. It gets here today at like, at like 3 or 4 o'clock, so it might arrive during the stream. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go grab it or something. But yeah, just doing some light stretching real quick here. As we do go into game two in this best of seven series. Oh, yes. Grandpa Gromby is a good counter. He's a, Okay, Gromby's an okay counter against chariots, but... It's not that good. It's He's pretty slow, and his radius of effect is like, you know, it's not huge. But yeah, he's okay against chariots. He helps. But, you know, oftentimes, you know, I just think having a very spread out gun line with crossfire is pretty good. And using the uh, Runes of Wrath and Ruin to slow if you need to is, is pretty efficient for sure. All right, guys, and we're here. It's go time. Kark, down a game, but coming in with the Vampire Count. Certainly going to be tough for the Beastie Boys. I think it's a matchup that slightly favors the Vampires, but again, I could be a little bit wrong there. And here we have the Lamian Vampire Lord coming in with Invocation of Nehek and Raise Dead. Pretty standard kit, but as far as the other spells go, we do have some uh, some sweet seduction going down, which is a pretty good ability, actually. Lowers melee attack and speed on a target. It's a target, right? So you can just kind of pop this, and it's a really underrated ability. On top of that, you see Scepter of Instability, which is going to be good against Spirit Leech play. And, you know, the Beastmen do come in with death sometimes. So I do like that pick quite a bit. Now, for the front line of Kark, he's got zombies, he's got skeleton spears in the secondary. In the back, he has Grave Guard with great weapons, just in case there's some Bestigors or armored threats, it looks like. Fell bats up here, and it looks like there's going to be Blood Knights and Blood Knights on both sides. And I think Blood Knights are the way to go here. Uh, Blood Knights or Terror Geists. Uh, Terror Geists are pretty good, but I really like the Blood Knights a little bit more because I feel like if you get a Terror Geist kind of wrapped up by the Beastmen, it can be hard to get away from like Centigors and Poison Hounds and Gorbals and things. So the Blood Knights... Uh, really good at cycle charging down infantry and large threats, so pretty good dual purpose here in this matchup. On the flank, he does have the chill guys, the chillest of all the bros in the realm, which I like this. It's going to be fun. I mean, if the Beastmen bring like a Deathcaster with Spirit Leech and Buna, this is going to be terrible, but based on what I see here, it should be okay. Granted, the Eye of Morsleep can warp gaze it and then also has magic damage itself with its boulders, so it needs to be careful, but I do like that pick from Kark. Now, for Flying Taco, we got Gore Herds, we got Spears in the front line, pretty standard Beastmen stuff. Most people in the metagame just put like these Chaffy Spears in the front with the better stuff in the back. We got Razor Gore Chariots, we got more Crew the Shadow Gave, Bray Shaman, so a pretty big uh, little Chariot Goon Squad here with the Bray Shaman summoning Cygors actually with Vile Tide. Uh, we got the Cygor here in the back, the natural Cygor, the Eye of More Sleep. We got pigs, we got archers, and pigs, yeah, pigs and archers basically. Should be fine. I mean, honestly, dealing with the Vampire Count Chaff in the front of zombies is like these gores and just Chaffy Spears units are more than up to fighting zombies, I'm sure. So, players are going to be rotating out. Chariots are going to be surging up the hill here. You can see that uh, both players obviously need to kind of get up on the high ground to see what's going on. Vampire Counts will have the advantage in this respect. So those guys are going to be up here just kind of cackling and having fun. And let's take a look at chat a little bit. Good luck, have fun, they say. Very, very cool stuff. 
So Felbats are going to be swooping down the hill going after the Razor Gore Chariots. And are they going to get a little bit of a pressure on those guys? Chariots should be fine though. Those guys have 100 armor, so they're going to be extremely durable against the bats. So literally only in Warhammer Fantasy do we have these people just whipping giant bats, which is pretty great. Look at that, just the whip animation so funny. Mork of the Shadow Gave coming over to help out a little bit. I wonder if Kark's going to leave the bats here. I feel like he should pull them back, but at the very least, he's holding these things in place. And Felbats do have 44 melee defense, so they're somewhat tanky. They're not going to go down super quick, but now that Mork of the Shadow Gave is kind of hanging out here, they're probably going to die, you know, rather fast. So if we look around the battlefield, the Vampire Counts are coming up with the Blood Knights, just pushing front and center. The other Blood Knights on the far side haven't moved yet, so hopefully Kark doesn't forget about those guys. He most certainly is going to need them as they do push in here. And the Dragon is going to be flying about. Lamy and Vampire Lord has some options here. Going to be juking some of these shots. Of course, both these players are quite skilled, so they can easily juke some of this ammunition, and the Vampire Lord takes barely any damage. Now, Ungor Raiders have pretty terrible AP as is, so it's not going to be super punishing. Oh, that was really good by Kark. Okay. I get this. Awesome stuff. Okay, so what Kark did for anyone who's watching is he sent in the Felbats knowing they would die, but then Flying Taco made a bit of a mistake. He actually attacked with Morker, and Morker has an automatic proc. So when anything gets very low health near Morker, he automatically kills it when it's at like 10%, and then he uh, basically summons Chaos Spawn from their corpses. Man, that was an outstanding play from Kark. Mind games, awesome. MLG no scoped those guys. Great stuff. So here the Blood Knights are able to pop over the hill and get a really good catch on Flying Taco's chariot. So it seems like Kark is out for blood this game. He's able to really kind of Maybe, uh, I don't know, discombobulate him, perhaps? Oh, but look at the Eye of More Sleep. Dropping some bows right there, doing some good damage, and the Chariot's going down to the Blood Knights. Man, Kark with some really, really good early game catches. Now in the back, you can see here the Chill guys are going to be coming in, and where are they going to go? I mean, they're going to be pretty durable against a small arms fire, but they still don't want to get pinned up by the pigs and just kind of these high-mass units. Granted, the Terror is going to be incredibly strong. Man, that was really, really good by Kark. I love that Chaos Spawn bait. That was solid. So anyway, Zombie's going to be coming in. Chaos Spawn will be pushing in and getting a couple kills on those guys, but nonetheless, not going to be too devastating. And Flying Taco also did lose uh, his chariots for the most part. I mean, they're down to two models, not going to be quite as efficient as they were earlier. And here in the back, ooh, look at that. Very, very good play from Flying Taco, though. He comes in with the Vile Tide and does a ton of damage to the Chill Guys as these piggies are going to be coming in. And these pigs are confident. These are bold, proud pigs. And uh, I don't know, the Chill Guys might actually just get outvalued here pretty bad. And that would actually be something that could get Flying Taco back into the game. He's going to be losing a lot of models here because Razor Gore Herds have pretty damn good mass. Now, the Chaos Spawn are able to punch through some Zombos, but that's only like 100 gold, so not really going to be much to write home about. And here we have the Ungor Spearmen Herds who are going to be fighting the Zombies. And the Eye of More Sleep generating some pretty good value, actually taking out 8 Blood Knights so far. So certainly can't complain about that situation. And now the Vampires are going to be surging in, but... So far, both players kind of giving blows back and forth. Kark with a very good baiting early, able to get those Chaos Spawn out. And from there, he was able to net some pretty good value. And here you can also see that, uh, you know, Flying Taco responds unkind and is able to pretty much mulch down the Chill Guys, who are going to be getting slapped with an Invocation of Nehek. And interestingly enough, they're going to be countercharging these Razor Gore Herbs. Now, they could tear out these guys. The pigs, of course, aren't immune to psychology. They're not... They're not in that department of a kind of a intensity. And here there's going to be a summon coming down from the Lamy and Vampire Lord, which is, which is a good play. Getting some summons and buffering down zombies would really help out here. But it looks like Flying Taco is actually going to be dropping a Saigor summon back here. But no summon from the Vampires, actually. Just a big old breath attack, which is good. It rose some gore herds, and the pigs are going to get broken off. And the Saigor probably going to get lanced down by these Blood Knights, to be honest. Now, back in the main fighting, you can see the frontline engagement is underway. Blood Knights going to be hammering the frontline of these Ungors, trying to buckle them down and get, get through a little bit quicker. I have more sleep still doing some okay poke here, and the Blood Knights are actually down to 24 models. And there also is a Warp Gaze available. Warp Gaze, of course, could be pretty good against these Blood Knights. Now, here the Blood Knights and Chill Guys are going to be going in for a fairly big Alpha Strike, and I'm a little bit concerned for the Beast People here. I feel like there's not much that's great against Chill Guys and Blood Knights here. There's Spears supporting as well, so the Blood Knights are now saturated with Chaff Units, which is going to make it harder for the Razor Gords to get on top of them. Plus, Lamy and Vampire Lord is going to be causing terror here, and I think this is a really good engagement here for the Vampire Counts. There's not too many hard counters as it pertains to the Beastmen Forces. But a really nice Vile Tide coming down from Flying Taco. He's able to blast the Blood Knights and some of the Chaff units there, clearing up some of the Spears. And the Piggies are, uh, you know, they're trying their best. They're seduced right now. In what world would a Razor Gore Herd ever be seduced by a vampire and be like, man, that is a that is a fine-ass vampire up there. Let, let, these pigs are thinking that, literally. But look at that. This is a really good play here by uh, Flying Taco. He's able to actually warp gaze the Lamian Vampire Lord. And now maybe Morker and the uh, the big old Saigor Beast are able to get some damage here. But it looks like Morker is a little bit trapped up behind, which is a little bit unfortunate. But the Lamy and Vampire Lord probably going to be dropping some zombie summons here, I would imagine. No, it's going to be the Chaos Spawn Summon from Warker the Shadow Gave behind the Lamy and Vampire Lord of Kark. So despite some relatively tough situations here for the Beastmen, he's able to get a really nice trap here, and these guys are unbreakable. So it's not going to matter that there's a lot of terror here. And if the Lamy and Vampire Lord does get caught and killed, 
<laughs> right as I say that, it escapes. I was going to say, that could be the turning point for the Beastman, getting back in this game. Uh, the Ray Shaman here actually going down rather quickly to the Blood Knight charge, so the Blood Knight's able to really take out that Ray Shaman, so that's going to get rid of the Vile Tides, and if Kark is paying attention, of course, he's going to be able to get the uh, Lamian Vampire Lord and pull in and probably take out that Ray Shaman pretty effectively. So, really good play by both players. It's been an awesome match so far. As far as the Vampires go, they have a pretty good core of infantry left. They have Zombies, the Grave Guard are pretty much untouched as a third rank reserve now coming in. And they're going to be able to really surge in. And a lot of the bounce power for the Beastmen is actually invested in Chaos Spawn. And I believe their second Cygor is still going somewhere. No, it actually looks like it got taken out by Blood Knight. So the Beastmen are living on, you know, borrowed time here. Once the Chaos Bond disappear, it's basically going to be a huge monster mash, just kind of grinding down Warker and the, uh, the Eye of Morsley right here. So it looks like Lamian Vampire Lord's going to be going for the overhead breath attack, which is really strong. And oh man, doing a ton of damage to the Eye of Morsley here. And at this point, the Eye of Morsley is actually shaken. You can see it's got 23 leadership. If the Lamian Vampire Lord maybe rear charged it, might be able to break it. Chaos Spawn have another couple seconds, but you can see here their timer due to being a summon unit is going to be dissipating them here in just a lovely moment. One and a two and a three. And there he goes. Lamy Vampire Lord getting in there. Pretty balls deep, but the Warp Gaze is going to be slapping the base again. And the I have Morsley plus Morker could do some pretty good damage here. So is Kark going to be punished for charging in here against a pretty you know substantial Beastman uh, you know, powerhouse? Doesn't look like it. He should be fine. On the flank, the chill guys are on cleanup duty. They're just doing a very good job. And obviously, when units are very beat up and tattered, they're going to be terror routing very quickly. So a lot of the Beastman forces here on the flank are going to be getting pushed off. And Kark's Blood Knight play has been very good this game as well. The Blood Knights are going to be hunting off the Bray Shaman, making sure it doesn't come back. And this is always a sign of a very savvy kind of a tournament player or a high-level player in general is chasing off units in games like this one. You know, he could blob up here, but he's going to get exponentially more value just chasing down all these different units. Here in the pit, we still have some undead fighting. So 20 Blood Knights and 80 Grave Guard. And the Lamian Vampire Lord with the Scepter of Instability popped is going to be dropping a fat, juicy breath attack. Oh, look at the damage. That literally did like 1,500 damage. And the Eye of More Sleep's Wavering. And the Lamian Vampire Lord perhaps going to be seducing some more pigs here in this match. Not sure about that. Going to be landing on the Chariot right here. And the Chariot does have a couple models left. But you can see, oh, the sweet seduction. So yes, the Beastmen have once again been seduced by the Lamian Vampire Lord. Not going to ask any questions about that. But it's basically Morker, the Shadow Gave versus the world. Very reminiscent of the launch of Beastman when Morker would just be tanking for like a year before he got some nerfs. And uh, yeah, he's going to be shaken. Most certainly going to be stirred as the last of the Beast Bray herd is going to be pushed off. A couple Raiders here on the flank going to be getting chased off by Blood Knights. And Kark is going to be normalizing this series. Very well played to both players. So it was a very fun game to watch. And now we have a 1-1 series. Not quite the rubber match because again, it is a best of seven, but... We're going the distance, and I have to say, I really liked Kark, uh, Kark's overload with the flank. He had the Blood Knights, he had the Chill Geist, he had the Lamy Vampire Lord, and supporting Spears. So the Beastmen, like, their tools for fighting back against those assets were the Razor Herds and the Eye of Morsley, but, like, they weren't really able to stand up to Kark's composition. And the Lamian did really good job, obviously got caught a couple times, but wasn't really punished too bad, and was able to drop some of that sweet seduction. So, well played there, guys. Well played there. Oh, goodness gracious. I haven't had any pierogi today, so I'm feeling a little bit weak. But uh, you know what? We're going to push through this, and uh, hopefully I'll survive, and I can get some tonight. Yes, yes. GG. Oh, no. <laughs> he says, hey, turn. So I, I, I kind of got to go. Oh, no. <laughs> no pee, man. For how long? Oh, man. Oh, no. The, the best of seven was so good. We could, we could take a break. So let me see what he says. All right. All right, that's fine. Oh, no, that's unfortunate. Oh, well, it's okay. Life happens, guys. So uh, we, we, of course, have people who can replace. <laughs> Look at Falcon rejoined his flying taco. Oh, my God. Falcon said he could film me, but I have to help me. Oh, no, P-Man. Uh, Gondor Grandma calls for aid. Rohan must answer. <laughs> All right. No worries, guys. It happens. It happens. Yeah. Family stuff. So we'll have Falcon jump in. <laughs> Falcon Flying Taco. All right. So I'm going to change the name of the stream to uh, Kark versus Falcon and Flying Taco, which is going to be good. All right. So uh, I guess, you know, Falcon's up now. He's, he can take over the uh, the record here. I mean, he is a clan mate, right? So, uh, so let's go ahead and pick the map here. We're going to be on River Amazon. Okay, Kark, pick, and ban. <laughs> oh, hey, look, guys. It's Flying Taco.
Don't worry, we got it. Falcon was on standby. So, uh, so yeah. So you two want to do a new best of five? So we could just reset it and have it be Falcon versus Karkir. Okay, so Falcon v Kark BO5. I will switch titling. Kark pick and double ban first. All right, so the first couple games were warm ups. So now we're going to do a best of five. So let me go ahead and, and switch the scorecards. Because it'll be about the same amount of games, but you know. Yeah. Oh, I don't need to switch Kark. I just need to reset the score. And uh, here, just so it doesn't confuse people. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. Best of five between uh, Kark and Falcon. Surprise. <laughs> Falcon says, hold my beer. <laughs> Kark, tear out of taco. <laughs> Oh my god. Turn, are you going to continue? Yeah, I might do that again someday, uh, Hell Hell Guest. Yeah. I think Falcon just wanted to play, so he, he, he coerced Taco into leaving. So he bans... Uh, he picks Lizardman and he bans Vampire, Vampires and Skaven. Okay. I'm just letting Falcon know that I just put up twenty dollars for the winner of this, so I'm just letting him know there actually is a prize. So if he, it, it may affect his memeing, <laughs> how much he wants to meme. I mean, it's not much, but it's still something for just jumping on for like an hour and playing, right? Like, yeah, can't complain. Uh, isn't best of seven with both guys winning one of a best of five? Not sure what you're saying, Hard Zombie. Yeah, we're jumping over to uh, oh my god, dwarves for Falcon's playing dwarves. Oh my goodness. Okay, and we're on River Amixon. So pick away. <laughs> Pick away. All right, so. I'm changing best of, uh, best of, <laughs> best of, uh, we'll say best of two. And best of B O five. All right, I changed the title of the stream. Yeah, there's going to be a, a third place stream when Flying Taco and, or not Flying Taco. When Felcon and El Halcon are both available, we're going to be doing a third place uh, uh, stream for uh, for ECL. Correct. So, uh, yeah, one of the players had a family emergency, so they had to go. So uh, Felcon has stepped in, and he's playing as Flying Taco. And uh, it's a little bit confusing, but... Yeah, so it's going to be Felcon versus Kark in a best of five now. Because it was a best of seven originally, but yeah, now we're here, so. Dwarfs will not fall today. <laughs> Maybe, he says. I'm excited to see, I mean, we don't get to see dwarves often. Yeah, 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 of course. You're more than welcome to link to Falcon stream. Absolutely. <laughs> By Ulrich's dentures. <laughs> oh man, that's pretty funny. Crumpum Falcon. Well, we'll see. You know, in the Eternal Challenger League, El Halcon put up a great fight, though, man. He put up a great fight. It was uh, it was amazing. He almost took out Xyphos. It was it was a two-two series, and then uh, Xyphos was barely just barely able to edge it out in the last game. <laughs> Aerocrastic, a new challenger approaches. Yeah, yeah. I mean, El Halcon had a great tournament run. He was able to um, have a three-zero in the initial rounds against his first opponent, and then from there, he just like was. Like, I mean, Xyphos won, right? And like, you know, that, that could have been El Halcon and Xyphos in the finals if they're on opposite sides of the bracket. Who knows? It was really good. Yeah, Kark's awesome. Kark is awesome. He's the man. Um, 
I actually had a, a, a league game last night. I played against one of my uh, my teammates in 40k. I'm on a 40k team actually, a competitive one, and uh, I got smashed pretty good. <laughs> uh, I uh, it was one of my first times using this list, and I came in, and he's he's like this this gentleman I play, Jeff. He's awesome. He's uh, he taught he teaches me a lot, and uh, he's like probably one of the better players like just in general, like in 40k. He he, he usually places pretty well at big tournaments and GTs and stuff like that, and uh, his orcs crumped crumped my uh, abaddon pretty good but you know I, I i had some opportunities to maybe get the game but there was a couple uh moments he had that just kind of like abaddon got one shot by this like haggard orc cannon that just statistically shouldn't have happened spoiler it's actually uh, flying taco's grandma playing now interesting stuff yeah no i'm i'm sure everything will be fine hopefully uh we'll, we'll check up on him uh after the fact All right, here. We're looking good. We're going strong. Players are ready. Kark is good to go. Uh, Falcon, it, it trips me out seeing the... Because the... it's like an exact replica. It's not even like a meme name, you know? Like <laughs> Best of two and a best of five showdown stream. Kark versus... Kark vs. XMT today. Dude, Abaddon got despoiled for sure. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to do the next King of the Hill. Probably sometime in the next week or two. Yeah, I'll do Battle, uh, battle Reports eventually as well, for sure. Um, you know, I'm playing in a big 40k tournament in September. Uh, I wonder if I could just like bring a camera. I mean, you can't... The thing about filming at tournaments is some players' opponents obviously won't want to be filmed, firstly. And secondly... Um, like, you have you, a, a very finite amount of time, and you usually play with a, a chess clock, right? So I have to be very quick on my movements and decision-making, and if I'm, like, filming and giving narrative and, like, explaining things, it's, it's a little bit tricky. Plus, it's super loud. So, I mean, I could also just, like, film the before and after of, like, turns. Aerocrastic for Xyphos? Well, I'd, I'd most certainly be willing to do that if those fine gentlemen want to. Uh, hello, guys. My schedule's pretty all over the place, but if you're in Discord, you just got to shoot me a message in there and... Uh, and we can talk from there. All right, guys. So the new best of five is going to feature Falcon on the dwarves facing off against Kark on the dinos. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how Falcon deals with this. So here in the back, he's got a cannon. He does also have a rune lord with the rune of wrath and ruin. And it looks like rune of negation, which is, you know, pretty standard stuff. The rune of wrath and ruin is just always good. He's got long beards, uh, thunders. It looks like he does have some troll hammer torpedoes. Ultars raiders here. Gonna have a nice little Dawi box for sure. Not too heavy on the uh, Giant Slayers, it looks like. Just regular Slayers. So Slayers, Slayers, and the Dragonback Slayers. I also like to get like one group of Giant Slayers occasionally. Having the extra AP is quite helpful here, but you know, maybe it works for him. He's got a couple Miners on the wings, just kind of, you know, keeping it honest. There could be some tricks from Kark where he comes into the back with like some, you know, Vanguard units like the Paco Pox Cohort, things like that. But for the most part, you don't need to worry too much about rear pressure from the Dinos. But as far as his gun line goes, he has a cannon, Altars Raiders, Trollheimer Torpedoes, and Thunder. So a little bit, uh, you know, definitely mixed forces here in this army. So for the forces of the Dinos, who shall be led by Kark, the champion of Clan QSA. Here it goes. He's got Red Crested Skinks here in the front line, which are pretty cost-efficient against the Dawi. Uh, you know, good AP, they have Poison. I mean, they can trade efficiently with Dwarf Chaff, especially, like with Dwarf Warriors and Miners and things like that. In the back, he's got a Hammer, so he does have a couple groups of Croxagores. So he's got Croxagores, Croxagores, a Feral Bastilodon, Croxagore Smash for days. And he's got Tehenwin, who's uh, quite solid, you know, mobile, good AP, poison, decent duelist to take out Dwarf Lords and characters. And he does also have that juicy Magikor summon, which is always very, very good. So good luck, good luck. No need to wait for me. You know, heart to zombie, it would uh, it would be nice. But the thing about having someone hold the camera for me is they'd have to be there for like eight and a half hours because Warhammer 40k tournaments are like balls deep. They just go forever. Like I'm talking like... Like, the tournament starts at, like, 10.30 in the morning, and it usually finishes, at like, 7 p.m. Like, it's no joke. Because each battle round is, like, two and a half, three hours, and you play three games. So, yeah, it's a lot. All right, so we're going to see if the dwarves are going to be able to kind of hold here. I, I personally feel like the lizards have an advantage in this matchup. Pre-DLC, not as much, but the fact that they got, like, a bunch of, like, solid units, like the Red Crested Skinks, for example, which are basically, like, designed to fight dwarves. Uh, is going to be pretty good. I mean, I'm, the one thing about Red Crest's Skinks is they are kind of squishy. They have 19 melee defense and 30 armor, so they do take a beating as well in the return, especially from blasting charges. 
So Falcon is able to get some blasting charges here in the front against the uh, Skinks and other units like that. That could be uh, that could be pretty good value. Now, as far as the cannons, they're going to be shooting Croc scores, which is a must. But the Croc scores must pay the troll toll. Uh, if they're able to get in and just penetrate that back line, they're going to be in a little bit of trouble for the Dawi. Granted, there are Slayers in reserve, and Slayers will be pretty efficient against Croc scores as well. Uh, not as much as like Giant Slayers, but again, Giant Slayers are quite a bit more expensive. So I wonder if Kark's going to do a little bit of a wraparound and try and pressure the Dawi flank. And look at this. In the back, I, oh, I didn't even see this. Kark did this against me the other day. He has the Paco Pox cohort in the deep reserve. And up in the hills here, he does also have Skink Skirmishers. So he does have stuff hiding. So his army, certainly uh, he's going to be waiting probably for the Slayers to kind of surge forward to fight the Croc scores. And the Paco Pox cohort will come out. So the first blasting charges are underway in the front, doing some pretty substantial damage against the Red Crest and Skinks. And yeah, being this beat up, they probably will lose to these Longbeards pretty badly. Longbeards are quite good. Red Crest and Skinks can probably beat Dwarf Warriors and Miners, but not so much against Longbeards. Longbeards have a really good stat line. 3150 is uh, certainly no joke as it pertains to combat stats. Now the big Feral Dinosaurs are going to be charging in. The Feral Bastilodon surges forward in the shadows of the night. I guess it's daytime, but that was just fun to say. And the Thunders here are going to keep shooting the Feral Bastilodons. Croxagore Smash is coming in as well. Falcon being very conservative here with his uh, back line. You can see the Slayers haven't really gone forward yet, but the first group of Slayers is going to be rushing in to intercept this Feral Bastilodon. But the Thunders and the Altar's Raiders are tearing apart these Croxagores. Oh, Mark Balthar are going down. That bread is being buttered. Look at the damage coming in. Just brutal stuff. And those Croxagores are probably going to be going down rather quickly. Now on the other side, Falcon is honestly holding his front line really well. I mean, the miners and company doing very well. The cannon here was able to break the other Croxagores. So I really think that uh, Kark is on the ropes here. The Jawi are holding firm and, uh, you know, Falcon clearly trying to be one of the heroes of the people here and is succeeding so far by uh, playing a dwarf game in a tournament stream. Feral Manscore is going to be flying over. I wonder where he's going to be going. Maybe after the Rune Lord, but Altar's Raiders are probably the best target. And now Kark is coming in with his uh, second wave of pressure. So Skank Skirmishers and other guys coming in a little bit late. I honestly think that maybe should, he should have timed everything to be at the same time. Because now what's going to happen is these guys are just going to be screened easily. And there's like no frontline pressure from the dinos anymore. Croxors are pretty much offline. They've won a couple battles over here, I suppose. And there is one group that's still kind of combat efficient, but it's going to be tricky. But I really do like Kark's kind of a thought process here. Using these Skank Skirmishers to take out Slayers is really, really solid. Because Slayers do have their own shields with their little twirling axes. But they don't, of course, have much armor, if any at all. Yeah, they have zero. So the uh, Skinks are going to be able to poke them down very efficiently. Feral Manscore doing some okay work against Altar's Raiders, but they're still in pretty good shape. And the Bounce Fire is pretty uh, pretty much in the favor of Falcon, I would say. But it's still not out of reach for the Dinos. A second Feral Manscore has been summoned. Croc scores have penetrated into the back line, but they are mucked up and inundated by Slayers and also are taking Troll Hammer Fire, which is not going to be fun for them. You can see uh, the Troll Hammers over there on the high ground are getting some really good shots in. Uh, Thunders are still in pretty good shape as well. Uh, Feral Bills, uh, Bastilodon, Gary has been forced off. And the Manscore is going to be charging in. Here it comes, getting a nice little charge here on the Iron Drakes with the Troll Hammer Torpedoes. Slayers are going to rush in and should be able to make very quick work and probably rampage that Manticore as well. The first summon Manticore, Hath Fallen, should be disappearing here. And the Bounce Fire is, is I would say, falsely inflated here for the, uh, for the what's it called? For the, uh, for the uh, little dinos. Like, once their Manticores are gone, it's really going to uh, reflect the true status of the battle, which is very, very good for the Dawi. Gun line up here, you can see that the Iron Drakes with Trollhammer Torpedoes shooting in, having a good old cackling time. Thunder is just uh, singing the songs of their people all over these Croxagores. Trollhammer Torpedoes getting a ton of damage as well, and the Rune Lord is also getting in there with his uh, little uh, handmade anvil. Oh, look at that karate kick. He just kicked that skink in the face. Top tier, uh, top tier commentary right there. So to end in the meantime, dropping a really nice Flock of Doom there from Kark. Now, as far as what the Lizards have left, they have their skinks. The Feral Bastilodon is going to be coming back in. Skink Skirmishers and company doing their thing. And uh, Kark may have forgotten about his Paco Pac cohort, which, you know, in the late game, if he can keep it close, this could actually be something that could get it back in the game. Like, I don't think Falcon's going to be expecting this, but Falcon is having really good screening. I mean, he's getting the Slayers. He's being very conservative here. He's not really dropping his uh, positioning here in the late game like a lot of players do. And I don't know, the Skink Skirmishers are shooting in, but they're also taking some crossfire here from the Thunders. And uh, yeah, we're going to see if the Paco Pac cohort can get him back in this game. I don't think so. Maybe it's going to bull rush through these Dwarf Warriors and then really surge into the back line. But I mean, there's Slayers here. There's Slayers down here, I think, as well. No, it doesn't look like it. I mean, the Slayers are getting pretty beat up, for sure. So Hanawin's taking a lot of damage actually fighting the Dragonback Slayers, which is a pretty bad situation for him. And the Paco Pac cohort does surge in, gets on top of the cannon, which is quite good. Very much like, yeah, he's like sending in his army in uh, kind of a waves. It's like a, it's almost like you're fighting like a quest battle. It's like the Paco Pac cohort has heard the, the songs of battle and has emerged from the forest to pressure you here in the fourth quarter of this battle. And Gary's coming back in. Gary could get some terror routes against some of the lower tier dwarf troops, but for the most part, it's Slayers and Longbeards and, you know, elite troops who are going to be immune to psychology and most certainly won't be affected by those circumstances. 
But, you know, the dinos are still going strong. I'm pretty impressed with that. But the Paco Pot cohort going down here, being shrekt here by the dwarves, pretty much spells doom. And you can also see that the dragon back slayers here are going to be just beating the brakes off to anyone. I mean, he's got his Moses tablet, and that is a big old skink. Look how giant he is. Just a jacked lizard. And the Rune Lord's actually running, but he does pop the Rune Invigation. It looks like Tehenuin may have uh, tripped on his shoelaces there and fell over, as the Rune Lord is going to be turning around and laying, uh, laying a bit of a smack in here on Tehenuin, maybe. Tehenuin would win in a vacuum here, but of course there are dwarves nearby supporting, and if any of the dwarves like, decide to turn and shoot here at Tehenuin, that's going to be a very, very quick night for him. Gary's going to be retreating up the hill. You can see he's going to be uh, scurrying up into the shadows over here, and the Skink Skirmishers are going to be dropping some fire here on Dwarf Warriors, but that's not really going to do much, obviously, against those shielded armored infantry. And now the Longbeards, our Dwarf Warriors, have sallied to their, their Rune Lord. And uh, Tehenuin doesn't have the best defensive stats. I mean, they're not bad. 45 melee defense and 75 armor is no joke. He's got some scaly, scaly hides going on. But that's going to be army losses. And Falcon is going to be taking game one in this series. So well played to the XMT, uh, <laughs> the XMT champ here. King Agisol, thank you for the $10 donation. He says, I was bummed that I missed the ECL finals. Consider this my belated donation for an excellent tournament turn. Thanks for all you do. It's very much appreciated. Well, King Agisol, thank you for your perpetual support. And hopefully you're going to be able to hang out here and watch this best of five. Yeah, I agree. The timing of Kark's push was most certainly off. I think had everything been in at the same time, like a big alpha strike, when the Crocs scores were pressuring, that could have been a very, very nasty push. But I think the timing was just a bit of an issue for him. And with that, uh, Falcon is going to be taking game one here. My apologies for the, any confusion that his name is causing. He's replacing Flying Taco, technically, but we started a new Best of 5 fresh. So Falcon is up 1-0 here in this Best of 5 series. And we're going to be going on to... I kind of want to pick like a really ridiculous map, but let's just do this one. It should be fine. Falcon, pick, and ban. Double ban. They're both saying GG. Falcon says GG, mate. It's very hurtful to win with Crocs of people. I think he's basically saying that it hurt him to actually have to destroy Croc scores, which were one of his favorite units. I know Zardar. And Zardar, I sent you a message in uh, Discord, by the way, if you could uh, check that. Please. And thank you. Ah, there you are. Okay, you got the message. Good. All is well in the realm. So he's picking, uh, he's picking Lizardmen, and he's banning Skaven. And... Is this, what the hell is this? Why am I just blanking on this right now? Like, I'm thinking Death Watch, because I was just playing 40k yesterday. So he picks Elizabeth and he ban he's banning... What the, what the hell? Dwarf? What am I, like, my brain is just not working. Okay, so, Enscaven, okay. Anyways, we'll figure it out what it, uh, what it is later. Hey, the stream's going really well, 404 Spike. We're having quite a bit of fun. We're in a best of five between Falcon and Kark right now. They're Crocs of people. Hey, darling. Hey, I'm starving. So I'm gonna go with mom and bird. Uh, do you want the uh, pad thai? Yeah, the fried rice pad thai. Or no, fried the fried rice uh, with saute. Do you, do you need my wallet? No, I don't need your wallet. Love you, darling. Lady turns says hi. She says chest. <whistles> or she just squeals. That works too. Yeah, dwarf. Uh, yeah, DW is probably dwarfs. Yeah, that would be a good guess. Good Zardar. You you guys just need one more player. So <laughs> you're gonna have to hunt down a last Grecian player here. Yeah, I'm slowly putting together the World Cup. So uh, I'm just building teams like one at a time. It's a little bit easier to manage. So uh, Team USA is looking pretty good. Got a couple of uh, Team Korea, Team Greece. Yeah, Biker222. Two, two, two. It's good to be good to have you here, man. <laughs> we got Lee. The whole crew is here. And Nutter Forever. I'd be interested to know the backstory of that name. Uh, thank you for the donation for the Vermintide. So, I mean, but the Vermintide was just banned. So we're, we're probably not going to see them. Uh, Falcon's on Lizardman and Kark is picking. Uh, Kark's picking right now. So we're basically kind of waiting right now. So he picks Lizardman and bans Dwarves and Skaven. Okay. Yeah, that was Anna. <laughs> Aerocrastic is Anna. What? Aerocrastic just said, did I just hear someone re in real life? <laughs> yeah, you did. She's good at it, too. It's solid. Aristid Amos, uh, you'll, you'll certainly be uh, invited. Don't you worry. As a matter of fact. Here you go. Hold on one second. All right. There you go, Aristo. Check your Discord. 
I still have to organize the Discord and like put titles and everything and do all that stuff. But it, it's a work in progress. It'll take me, it'll take me a couple days. Nutter is your surname. Okay. Got it. Got it, brother. And again, thank you for the donation. Because it's just, it's just very, it's an unusual name. Uh, King Adjazal. Harambe like Total Warhammer 2. Dude, Adjazal, we haven't had a Harambe joke like on a cast in a long time. Like there was a there was a wave where like every other video I would be like, oh yeah, this guy's like, you know, going out for Harambe here, you know, things like that. But man, the Harambe meme really kind of disappeared. A solid re, what more can a man ask for? <laughs> oh my god. So card going on Tomb Kings, which uh we shop to great bows, chariots. I mean they have a lot of good stuff against dinos for sure. Tomb Kings, I think, are a top tier faction. I think they're very good. They have a ton of really good units. They have good archers. They have decent infantry. I mean, Tomb Guard are not bad. Uh, good mobility with Nagar Horsemen. Good chariot play. Like powerful monsters. Great lord choices. Unless your opponent has Fireball, I've learned. <laughs> yeah, Mass Vanguard Greenskins. I don't know. Well, Falcon's going for lizards now, so he's probably going to go for the classic Falcon, just coming in with like Horn Ones and Bronus Time Warp and just going in deep there. But you know, we'll see. There are certainly options. Yes. Yeah, all, all, all memes must go. That is true. All right, I'm going to grab some water real quick while the players uh, finalize their, their armies here. Well, Aristodemos, I literally just made it yesterday. Or a day or two ago. Yeah. Getting some water, my friends. Hey, darling, are you baking something? Oh, some delicious water, as always. So, basically, we're going to be doing a... Uh, for World Cup, I've decided we're going to be doing group stages and it's going to be like one major tournament. So we're literally going to do it exactly the same as like the FIFA World, or not FIFA World, but you know, the football or soccer World Cup, depending on where you're from. So uh, each group stage in the beginning will have four teams and each team will play every other team in their group and the, the two teams with the best records will advance. Uh, tiebreakers obviously will be based on wins and or matches won and lost. And uh, yeah, so there's going to be group stages. I'll try my best to put people in like fun rivalries. Like, you know, I'm going to try and have like certain countries have rivalries play each other, but Wow. Oh my God. Gangsta Moo Crew coming in with the deep fat donation. Gangsta Moo Crew, that is some gangsta shit. Thank you for that 100 donation. My water appreciates it, as do I. <laughs> I'm a true hydro homie. That is correct. Gangsta with the $100. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun though. I'm very excited for the World Cup. France France is going to have a pretty nasty World Cup team. I mean they they're going to have they're going to have, you know, a lot of ODM guys, Zyphos obviously extremely Zyphos just won the uh, ECL season 2. I mean and uh, if he's playing, I mean that that alone is going to be pretty heated. Thank you so much for the donation, man. Holy shit, that is a that is a fat one, Gangsta Moo Crew. <laughs> I love your name, man. Been waiting to contribute for some time, but first live stream. Well, hopefully you're enjoying. You get to see some high level play get to hang out with the boys and girls I, I, I don't know probably I think like literally 0.5% of my channel is uh is I think 1% is like female it's like one or two percent and it's probably Anna my mom and a handful of other folks <laughs> yeah so basically the country has to have at least three people and uh if somebody could drop a if somebody could drop a link to the Discord, that'd be great. You can message me for details in there, but essentially you need to have some tournament experience like and have played in competitive venues because I want the matches to be like high level. Um, so, you know, obviously if you're newer, I think it's something to kind of aspire to. And, you know, but again, if there is a team that, you know, is, is three newer players, but they can still field the team, I'm, I'm willing to hear you out. But um, I want the streams to be like evenly matched because you're going to be playing against people or, you know, like Soothsayer and Aerocrastic and freaking... Xyphos and Falcon and things like that. So, um, yeah. All right. So here we are in match two between Falcon and Kark. Certainly going to be fun. We have Lizardmen versus Tomb Kings. And for the build of Kark, 
the QSA champ here today. He's got Skeleton Warriors in the front line. A couple groups of Skeleton Horseman Archers. Interesting pick against the Dinos. Perhaps a bit of a tool against Pterodon Riders and some of those more annoying threats like that. But it gives you Battlefield Control, which is nice. He's also got two Carrion, two Shopty Grapos, which, you know, actually we saw that Aero Classic in the uh, Ever Chosen Invitational against uh, Soothsayer. Had some really beautiful Carrion play and actually used them to pin in single entities and was able to net massive value from those. So Carrion certainly had a lot of potential. Pretty good mass on those bad boys. He's got a couple of Shopty Grapos, like I said. Two groups of regular Shopty. Spears in the back. And for the leadership kit here, who does he have? Who's he hiding somewhere with? Ah, uh, we have Setra the Imperishable and his Mighty Steed joined by a Tomb Prince. So this is going to be his anti-large kit here. Both Setra and his Tomb Prince do, of course, have anti-large. Interestingly enough, though, Kark Cut Guardian here, which I don't agree with. Uh, maybe he just really wanted to pinch some money somewhere, but I think Guardian is really good if you're going to have a Setra Goon Squad. But anyways, for the forces of Felcon, it is OG Felcon. This is classic vintage stuff here. We got Temple Guard, Source in the front line, Crocodors, two Feral Carnosaurs, and the Bronus Time Warp. So basically, it's just a big monster mash list. Like, it just goes deep. It goes deep. Man, intense stuff here. So here we go. You can see here that the Sora Scar veterans are going to be surging forward. Taking a little bit of poking fire here from the Skeleton Horseman Archers. Your Shopty Great Bows are going to be raining in as well. And the Shopty Great Bows are going to be very good for Kark. And uh, he certainly has some good tools against his Monster Mash build. I mean, your Shopty Great Bows, especially Chosen of the Gods, can really do a ton of damage against Temple Guard. They do have that Spray Fire, and he does have those. So he's shooting in against Temple Guard, taking out some models there, doing some decent HP damage. And what is he going to do with these carrying? They're just flying overhead at the moment. We're going to see if these guys uh, are going to be maybe flying in, doing a little bit of work. Felcon's build, of course, is very blitzy. So he's going to need to close the distance very quickly and start pressuring those who shopped you Grapos. But it is going to be tough to, tough to stop the Croc score plus double big dinosaur pressure. Now, he does have a Banishment as well. No, he didn't bring Banishment. No, he does have it. Yeah, he does have it. Okay. Barona's Time Warp, a Nets of Amatok, Fos Protection. All very, very good choices. Fos Protection can be overcasted to grant a pretty good little AoE uh, radius right there. And Felcon, of course, very savvy play. is going to be hiding in the tree line. So he's hiding in the trees, which will mitigate the effectiveness of the Chosen of the Gods. And you shop your Grapos and these other choices. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Feral Carnosaur, Sora Scar Veteran, still kind of a strafing in the tree line. But he is wasting a bit of ammunition. And I wonder if Felcon's going to just try and endure this. I personally think advancing would be a little bit better, at least with your infantry. If you want to hide in, you know, hide some of the big dinos and croc scores in the trees, that's one thing, but it's still going to add up. That damage is going to be substantial. He doesn't have any way of healing. Of course, back in the old days of Total War Warhammer 2, when it first came out, Cold Blood on the Lizardmen used to actually heal. Man, that feels like it was like aeons ago. But anyway, Skeleton Horseman Archer's poking in. But the tree line's really helping. It's uh, it's kind of mitigating a lot of this damage, and the Ushapu people are actually running... Not low on ammo, but they're almost at half, which is which is something, but I'm really surprised Felcon's playing this way. I, I assumed he would kind of blitz out, but there he goes. So he's moving out with the Source. I mean, just get them fighting against Skeleton Warriors and other troops. Granted, I think Kark is going to just fall back with the Skeletons and try and pull Felcon apart, which is really smart. I, I really have to say, I think Kark's play here is very, very good. Like, he's not giving Felcon the, the big blob fight that he wants. I mean, he might surge in with some troops here just to halt the advance, but I think he's probably going to keep some in reserve, I would imagine. So, so far, Kark is probably a little bit ahead in the overall status of the, the battle, but now that the main fighting's underway and a big old juicy bonus time warp has gone down, these Temple Guard and these other troops are just going to tear up these Skeleton Warriors and the, uh, they're going to go down super quick. Yushapti's still shooting in. Ammunition is about half here, and the Chosen of the Gods are a little bit less than half, so that's something to kind of think about. Temple Guard are going to be very efficient against Yushapti as well. So I don't know. Big Dinos are rushing back here. But also, we have Setra plus a Tomb Prince plus support from the Ushapi Grapos. This might be a situation that's going to be really, really good here for the Tomb Kings. Setra's going for the straight duel. Ooh, and Setra gets a massive blow there on the Sora Scar Veteran. Desiccation is going to be going down as well, which is going to be lowering the stat line here of all these big angry dinosaurs. But I have to say, Kark's targeting here is outstanding. He's able to really punish the Sora Scar Veteran. Foss Protection, Shield of the Old Ones going down. Felcon coming in with a potential counterpunch. Now, if Felcon can get these Temple Guard kind of on top of this fight here and, you know, not lose the veteran and the uh, Feral Carnosaur to these, uh, these anti-large units here, to etc. plus the uh, Tomb Prince, that would be a pretty good situation for him. But it looks like the Temple Guard are going to be surging in. He does stop the Rampage with Cold Blood, so very good play there from Felcon. And Kark, outstanding game so far. But also, guys, but you have to remember that if the ammunition is running a little bit low, there's still a, a metric ton of Temple Guard and Croc scores just kind of pushing in happily. So if those guys aren't dealt with, they're going to be able to potentially grind out this fight. Now, there's no Star Chamber Guardians, which I think Felcon didn't bring the Star Chamber Guardians simply because he didn't want a Buna target, because obviously Ark in the Black is a very, very popular pick. Setra, in the meantime, getting uh, slapped up a little bit by the uh, Scar Veteran, actually. So the Scar Vet kind of stabilizing from his earlier beatdown he was taking, or actually the Feral Carnosaur, I should say. And the Temple Guard are really grinding out. Croxors are going to be bull rushing into the back line, obviously wanting to get onto the Ushapti. 
And it looks like Kark actually, Kark is with the sneaky deployments, man. He has stuff all over the place. So Kark had a Tomb Scorpion Vanguard deployed who is just now joining the battle. So the Tomb Scorpion here is gonna be pretty efficient kind of fighting against these infantry. Granted, you know, he's gonna take a lot from Temple Guard as well. A very, very close fight. So if we kind of take inventory of things, such actually the Imperishables at about 70%. Tomb Prince is very healthy, and the Ushapti Summon is going to be getting dropped. So both players really committing to an Alpha Strike here. But something that's not great for Kark right now is the fact that he's kind of letting his Ushapti get bullied by the Croc scores. I think maybe the Ushapti should fall back, but I don't know. Falcon's very persistent here with these Croc scores. Plus they have a speed buff from the Bronus Time Warp. So I don't know. Yeah, getting those Ushapti Great Bows might actually give Falcon the game. Anyways, Tomb Scorpion here is still fighting the Sour Scar veteran, who is buffed by Bronus Time Warp here. This is going to be going in, uh, going in after this, uh, this, this. I was about to say Velociraptor, Velosa Scorpion. Uh, he's going after the Tomb Scorpion, and the Feral Carnosaur for Felcon's actually broken, but the Bounce Power is actually still in Felcon's favor because his Temple Guard core is so meaty. Plus, that fat, thick slot is still going hard. He's going to be having probably you know another banishment perhaps, and he probably has you know a fair amount of Winds of Magic and the Aura of Pretzel. And that's the thing, I mean, I would say Kark's doing a really good job taking out these big dinos, and this guy is actually going to be breaking to Carrion, maybe? Hard to say, the Tomb Scorpion is trying to fall back, but oh no, this is actually really, really bad for Kark. The Tomb Scorpion a little bit, it, it probably wants to be more front and center near Cetra, but the Tomb Scorpion going in for an Alpha Strike on the Feral Carnosaur, but there's going to be two big-ass dinosaurs here just chewing on the Scorpion. Oh man, they might be able to just value train him down. Yeah, look at him, a negative 33 already. Now, is the Tomb Scorpion going to make contact? It looks like it misses. Sorry, Scarvets have okay melee attack, and Tomb Scorpions actually have less melee defense. And uh, yeah, the Cold Blood keeping this guy fighting. Outstanding Cold Blood usage this game from Falcon. And with that, it looks like the Dino Beatdown Squad is holding firm. I mean, Croxagores are smashing up the Ushapti here, and the Scorpion has gone down as well. And the Slon is thick, he's proud, he's happy, he's independent, and he's just rolling around on a scooter, and uh, he's, he's taking no prisoners. So right now, we have the Slon Mage Priest of Light, Still steady. I mean, there's Saurus, there's Temple Guard. I just don't think there's any way that Cetra can carry this. I mean, maybe if Cetra pulled back and gooned out all these single entities, but there's too many Temple Guard and Saurus. And Saurus, you know, Dino Infantry in general are not pushovers. You know, I really thought Kark might have a pretty good chance in this game, but, you know, Falcon's persistence and pressure with the Croxagores, he just kept pushing and kept pushing. And when he eventually shut down those Great Bows, it really changed the dynamic of the game. But Kark played an outstanding game. He was able to pretty much bring down all the big Dinos and really tatter up the force of the Lizards here, but... Nonetheless, Setcher the Imperishable is going to be perishing. He has an expiration date, and it is uh, 3.06 p.m. on Wednesday. And there he goes. Yeah. Well, GG, Falcon going up 2-0, guys. If Falcon wins the next game, that's going to be it for this best of five. And he will win the prize. And uh, if Falcon wins this next game, uh, I'll probably play like a quick battle or two just for fun. So, All right, so game three here. Let me go ahead and update the scoreboard. We got that. We're all good to go. And the next map is going to be... Let's do Eshin. Eshin's one of my favorite maps. I really like this one. All right. Thank you guys again for joining. 688 people. And we got a donation or a membership coming in from uh, Lee Gu. Thank you so much. And welcome to the uh, to the emoji crew. You got some sweet emojis and you got a little squig. The longer you are a member here on the channel, you uh, get access to a, a new ascending icon. Eventually you get Kolek and Aslan, I think, is the... The final tier. Setra come back to her 2020? I don't think so, Hannah, unfortunately for Setra. Yeah, no, but man, F Falcon was on the ropes. I actually thought he was going to lose that game, but his persistence, man, with those those Croc scores just pushing in. So uh, Kark picks Norska and he bans Vampire Counts and High Elves. The High Elf ban is very good because Falcon is a very good High Elf player. Uh, so I think that's good. I think Falcon might come out with Wood Elves here and just do his Wild Rider Blitz, which is really hard to stop, actually. <laughs> Falcon Taco scrapping, yeah. I really thought Falcon was in huge trouble. I mean, his army took a beating initially. Maybe if Kark had had a little bit different positioning on the Great Bows and had them more offset in the back, because they kind of got caught up in the blob, and at that point, it's very, very tough for sure. Yeah, Croxagore Death Stars are gangster for sure. What is this link, Anna? I'm going to click it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I clicked it, and it just started playing on my laptop. I was like, oh, God. All right, here. One second. That was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, my lovely wife dropping the best of links. And guys, we have a donation from Khalid on uh, PayPal as well for $5. Khalid, thank you for the donation. Hopefully you're enjoying the stream and you're having all your uh, Warhammer fantasies fulfilled. Ooh, Falcon coming in with Dark Elves here. That's, that's scary. You know, one of the better players out there coming in with Dark Elves. That's tough.
I immediately regret that click. Yes. <laughs> that is correct. I don't, I don't know what I expected. I don't know. I'm not sure. But, you know, it still made me laugh, so it was worth every second. So in the best of five currently, Falcon is up 2-0. If Kark drops this, then it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's game over, man. I could take, I could be a get and take Skaven or Vampires, but I take Dark Elves. Fair play. Fair play. Uh, Dark Riders, the the flying Dark Riders. No, not really. The problem with them is they're expensive and they don't have a lot of ammo. So they just, it's like if they had like twice as much ammo, I actually think they could be a really annoying unit. But the fact that they're like ammo limited and uh, they're so cool too. Like these flying like Pegasus archers, like that's so neat. But yeah, it's 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 pretty rare you see it. Yeah, they can't have free reign. I think the big issue is their ammunition though. So as far as this matchup goes, I think we're going to see some some skin wolves in Femir, <laughs> which is pretty safe to say. Oh, this is, I'm an H, a hydro bro. I like that. That was that was good. Whoever said that earlier. So if this does conclude here, I'll play a couple. Uh, I'll play a couple quick battles. I'll play like one or two. Flying Dark Riders are really good against Norska. I don't know. Are they though? I mean, I guess sniping the big monsters, like you, you get free reign. I mean, javelins are the only thing you have to worry about, really, which you can outrange pretty easily. And you could shoot, you could shoot Famir, you could shoot skin wolves. I don't think skin wolves are the most efficient to shoot because they'll just regenerate through it. But maybe the Famir, yeah. Like in sniping like Wolfric and Mammoths and things like that could be okay. I mean, Falcon might actually bring something like that. We'll see. How many dragons? There will probably be at least one big black dragon. Yeah, knowing Falcon, he'll probably have a dragon. But is Kark going to come in with the Frost Room, though? Probably not. Kark brings very unorthodox builds, for sure. Very unorthodox. I've, and if anyone wants to see, I had a pretty good battle against Kark a couple days ago. It was uh, his Vampire Coast versus my uh, Avalon, which was fun. Regular Dark Riders can do that well enough. Yeah, correct. I mean, the Repeater Crossbows, like... The thing is, Norska has pretty good pursuit options. So if Norska wants to hunt you down using, like, uh, Frost Wolves and... Uh, or Ice Wolves and you know, skin wolves and stuff. It can be pretty hard to get away from Norska, especially they have a lot of slowing mechanics. But um, if you support your repeater crossbow dark riders with like your own calf, like you can get a lot of value against Norska. As a matter of fact, like when I play Norska, a lot of time with dark elves, I like to play like a very loose style of kiting. Uh, I mean, you still have some infantry, but for the most part, it's like a bunch of dark riders, it's slenishes, harvesters, cold one nights, and like you just kind of pull them apart. It's still hard to do, but if you can kill their mobile assets, you can pretty much have whatever, you, you can do whatever you want to the Norska army. But yeah, Norska is pretty good against the, the kite as well. I mean, they, they can use a bunch of skin wolves and again, frostbite is huge. Like one frostbite screw up and like that unit's dead, which is massive, massive value. Correct, correct. Yeah, Rissademos, drop a link to Falcon stream again. For anyone who wants to watch Falcon playing live and see how a master micros, uh, you know, Rissademos uh, hopefully will be able to drop a link here. No, you know, uh, my, my middle name is not from the Cimmerillion, as, as awesome as that would be, but it's actually just, uh, it's Italian. It's just Italian ancestry. It's a, it's been, my it's my dad's middle name. It's my grandpa's middle name on my dad's side. It was his, his it was his freaking uh, dad's name. So it's, it's kind of like a family name that gets passed down as a middle name. All right, guys, and here we go. Yeah, my middle name is actually just Turin. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not the most creative of gents when it comes to naming my channel, but. Thanks for Sedamos. And uh, yeah, he's dropped a link to Felcon's channel. So if you guys want to go watch him live and also subscribe, he streams often and is uh, very good. Uh, he had a very, uh, you know, good performance in the Eternal Challenger League. Obviously, uh, you know, it wasn't his day when he played against Lotus. I, I've seen him, you know, do very well against this type of builds. But, you know, it's, it's any given Sunday. Like everyone has a bad game every now and then. It's just it's just how it is. I mean, he won the previous season and beat some super heavy competition. So, you know, it's just any given Sunday. Yes. So for the armies of Kark and the Norskins, here in the front line, we got Marauders going into the sunset, Marauder Horsemen. We got a, a double Frostworm. Awesome. Kark is the man, bringing awesome builds. Marauder Chieftain, Premier Balefiend with Shadows, Skin Wolf and Norskin Ice Wolf uh, flanking combo, which is great. I mean, this is a big Alpha Strike build. And for Felcon, 
We have Dark Riders, we have a Hydra, we have the chillest of Sontars, the chilliest of bros in all the realm, Malekith on a Black Dragon, Elite Troops with the Black Guard here on foot, and Cold Moon Knights. Man, this is going to be a game. Now, I think Kark has some really good options. His horsemen are going to be quite good at dealing with the Hydra, potentially. And the dragon's breath attacks can, if used effectively, roast the Black Guard very, very well. Gaze of Malice going down in the Marauders. And I wonder if uh, I wonder if Kark's going to take the engagement. Honestly, with his infantry, I probably wouldn't bother at first. And it looks like there's going to be a chill of Santar breath coming down. And oh, there it goes right in the face. But it does kind of skirt over the top of those guys. But it still does take out a handful of models. And these, yeah, I don't know. I feel like if I were Kark, I might not engage with the infantry because it's going to just kind of, you know, give the Black Guard something to kind of chew on here. But the Marauder Horseman going to be throwing in and maybe going after Malekith. Double Frostworm is very, very interesting. But again, Kark a little bit delayed here. Like, he engages with his main force when the other stuff's out of position. I feel like he needs to kind of be a little bit more careful with that. So anyways, here, some of the Skin Wolves are going to be getting uh, hunted. Someone may have dropped here. Hopefully not. It's not Tuesday, is it? No, it's Wednesday. We shouldn't have any issues there. But if we had a drop, we could just reset. I mean, it's early. The battle's still up in the air. Both players have taken damage. Who cares? Okay, okay, okay. I like it, I like it. I'm working with it. Someone, someone's struggling here. Let me make sure it's not me. That would be embarrassing. Nope, we're good. Huge value out of some frosty breaths. Yeah, absolutely. Come on. Come on. Someone's PC is fighting the good fight here. It's fighting the good fight. Yeah, the breath attacks could are going to be what decides this game. Like, if, if Kark is able to get a good breath attack right here on these black guard and these ones right here, that is going to be huge. Some skin wolves of Kark are actually fighting over here. You can see they've engaged against this blob, which is a bit of a, a risky gambit. But they're pulling back. They should be able to regenerate. And the horsemen are doing okay work. But I feel like Felcon's blob is just paying more dividends right now. Nice little breath attack against the black guard, but his marauders are just getting whooped on, like, everywhere. He does also have a Marauder Chieftain on a Chariot, and his Premier Bale Fiend is going to be dropping a Fat Pendulum right here, so that's going to be going down. And yeah, good value from Kark. I mean, he's getting some really good work done with the uh, Pendulums, and the Breath Attacks were decent. Not like super game-changing or anything, but, you know, the battle's devolved into a bit of a kite, which I think is good. As far as AP goes, like, you don't need to focus down the Black Guard too much, aside from Breaths and Pendulums, but is Malekith going to come fight the Frostworms? This is really dangerous, because if he gets caught here by Malekith and the Frostworm gets, like, trapped up, that could be pretty bad. So Kark surging in with some Skin Wolves. Going to be attacking the uh, Dread Spears here. And the Frost Worms need to get back. Another Breath Attack going down and doing okay work against Dark Riders. And yeah, that would be really strong. If Kark is actually able to get rid of the Dark Riders, that would be very, very, very good for him. It would uh, kind of free up his Dragon play and his Kiting potential and uh, all sorts of good stuff like that. Marauder Chieftain here is going to be falling back. It looks like Malekith might be trying to drop his Soul Stealer on him. Yeah, it looks like Soul Stealer is going to be coming down. And Kark does counter charge actually into the slightly over overextended Cold Ones here. And you know what? Kark could actually grab these two Frost Worms and maybe try and 2v1 Malekith, and it looks like that's what he's going to do. The dragons are going in. That's going to be tough for Malekith, because the Frostbite is really going to slow them down. And yeah, the two dragons coming in. Double dragon beat down, but of course, a Felcon being a very savvy player knows that if he's pressured up in the sky, why not land on the ground and get in a relatively safe situation? So, balance of power is pretty even. If anything, it might actually be slightly be in Kark's favor. A lot of his skirmishers are being taken out, and the Black Guard have been roasted by good Pendulum play, as well as Breath Attacks. However, you know, Falcon still got a dragon and a Hydra. That is uh, that is not an easy thing to deal with. Marauder Chieftain here for the Norskins is still uh, still going strong. Still at about 60% HP, so he's, he's certainly still in the picture. And he could do some good cycle charging here and take out these Dread Spears and things like that. He needs to get busy, for sure. Now, Malekith's going to be getting uh, chased here. Although, oh, that's really good value for Falcon. The fact that the Skin Wolf, 13 models, is going to get pushed off the battlefield, that is a, a huge, huge uh, boon here for the Dark Elves. So they're going to get pushed off, but... But is Kark going to be able to kind of capitalize on that? Because, oh man, this is really bad for Falcon. Malekith is in the Shadow Realm, and there's so many Frostbite units here. I mean, if Kark plays his cards right, Malekith should die here. Like, there's no way he should get away. He literally has 26 speed right now. He has the Chilling Aura from the Frostworm. So the Frostworm has an, uh, an Aura plus a Frostbite. So it literally has Malekith at 26 speed. And if Malekith breaks here, oh man, that probably just won Kark the game. Probably. Anyways, over here we have some loose fighting as well. Skin Wolves are still running about. We have the Marauders and company doing their thing. And here on the low ground, we have the Marauder Chieftain charging into some Halberds. He needs to be careful. If he st sits here too long, he's going to be going down really quick. I mean, look at his HP just get chewed down. 1,000 HP. These Halberds are no joke as they tear apart the Marauder Chieftain. That's a pretty big loss for Kark. I mean, uh, it is, of course, going to have a penalty on his army. But that Marauder Chieftain just got shreked into another dimension. And over here, oh man. Falcon somehow able to stabilize. And I think it's because of the Soul Stealer. He was able to get a really good Soul Stealer here. And Malekith is shaken. And the Frostworms aren't able to get him. Oh my goodness. Malekith tanking like an absolute boss. And that's that's obviously due to the Soul Stealer here. 1700 HP. The Chill of Santar is coming in now. I mean, 
Kark's window is kind of closing here. He's got Malekith very low. He's breaking. Oh, if Malekith breaks here, that would be that would be nice for him. But the Spears are coming in. The Chill of Sanchar is coming in. And there's no really supporting Norskin elements here. There could be a Frostbite coming in. Not Frostbite, but a, a Pendulum. That'd be really nice. Oh, no. The Frost Room with really bad leadership. How is he breaking so quickly? So Pendulum's going to be coming in from Kark's uh, Premier Bale Fiend up on the high ground. Nice Pendulum, actually. that tears through a lot of forces. And if Kark gets his Frost Rooms away, I think he will be okay here. Because he's probably going to be able to hunt down Malekith. But Malekith going in for a fight against a Balefiend, which is a little bit risky, but probably not a bad idea. You know, the uh, Balefiend does get knocked over. Malekith maybe gets some free damage. Who knows? Here on the low ground, we do have a bunch of uh, the Black Guard kind of uh, pursuing these Marauder Horsemen. I'd probably just put these bad boys in skirmish mode and just pull the Skin Wolves over here. But the Frost Rooms are going after Malekith, and this is their opportunity to shine. I mean, they have to get Malekith here. If they don't, if Malekith lives, I think it's pretty much going to be, you know, a, a wrap here. And I think that the uh, Norskins will be in trouble. So it looks like a charge coming in. Oh, this is risky. The Balefiend could could fight back. Plus the Frost Worm coming in. Does he make contact? Malekith actually evades it with his melee attack. So his melee attack holds firm against the Frost Worm. Malekith's pretty tanky. He has 52 melee defense. He's uh, not a joke. So both players committing to a pretty big Alpha Strike here. The other Frost Worm's going to be coming in as well and going after Malekith. As far as the angling goes, Malekith, does he take the damage? He does. He's down to 776 HP. And this Frost Worm's actually... I don't know why the Frost Worms are breaking so easily, but I guess there's a lot of Halberds and there's a scary-ass Hydra back there. But Malekith has about 590 HP, 229. Skin Wolves are attacking as well. And it looks like Darth Malekith might be going down here. 79 HP, and Malekith does fall. So, the thing is, is though Malekith was able to kind of force a fight that allowed for the trade of this Frost Worm here. So that's a really good situation. There's still a ton of Black Guard left, and the Skin Wolves here are probably breaking off. The Bale Fiend's probably going to be dying as well to the Chill of Santar, so... Suddenly, the Norskins are looking a little bit tattered, guys. Like, I don't know what else they have here to really support. I mean, the Frostworm getting caught is big. I mean, if it gets away and has some breath attacks in reserve, maybe. But Felcon is suddenly in a pretty dominant position. Chill of Santar is, like, going to be able to beat this Frostworm. Like, and what else does he have to fight the Chill of Santar? He's got a couple of really beat up, like, horsemen everywhere. The Chill of Santar is no joke. Look at this thing. 7,000 HP of just pure angry Hydra. So the Frostworm is going to be falling back. Skin Wolves are really big, actually. That's probably one of the last saving graces here. For the, uh, for the Norskins and the Balefiend. But yeah, if the Skin Wolves just get thrown away into Halberds, that's going to be a really bad situation. So are there any Breath Attacks left? That is the question. Both players are leaderless. Neither of them have any uh, goodies in that respect. And what is he going to be doing with this, uh, this Frost Worm? Probably just Cycle Charging Halberds as they re try and relocate. Oh, and the other Dragon came back. That's really big. If he has a Breath Attack, I mean, 600 HP is still something to work with here. And some of the Horsemen are still throwing in. Skin Wolves are Cycle Charging, but Kark, of course, not going to be leaving them in combat. So good control there. If he could get a terror route on some of these guys, but the Blackguard aren't going to be terror routed, unfortunately, for uh, for his sake. But if he could, like, terror out some of the spears off and just chase them off, slow incremental value. So Breath Attack coming in there. Not the best. It gets a little bit of value for leadership here on this Frost Worm. Clearly, they don't have the best leadership. But some Marauders are coming in as well. And once some Marauders engage, that's going to be quite nice. And Skin Wolves need to pull back. If they break off the map, that's just, that's game over. Like, Kark really needs these Skin Wolves in the late game to actually fight against the Hydra. And, oh, the Skin Wolves get broken. Very, very tough situation here, as this Frost Worm is just on the edge of glory. So here you can see that the uh, Femir Balefiend with Shadow is going to be dropping up. Oh, a big Pendulum opportunity. Oh, and here it comes. Oh, beautiful Pendulum there, tearing through a lot of those Elf Forces. Able to get some good work against the Black Guard. And Dragon's coming in now. I don't know if I agree with this. Yeah. I think just kind of, you know, bide your time and use all your ammunition here before you go in. And try and methodically break off some of the troops and just chase them off the map. Uh, the Balefiend's pretty good in combat as well. Uh, he does, of course, have Armor Sundering and, uh, you know, 400 Weapon Strength isn't bad. But is Kark going to get caught on a tree here? It looks like he might. He was trying to do a bit of a Cycle Charge here with the Frost Worm. And he doesn't get the Terror out on the Spears, does he? It looks like they do get Terror out. Actually, Skin Wolves are charging in as well. Kark with a big old Alpha Strike, trying to get a big Surround. And the Black Guard are, like, very, very beat up, right? But this Frost Worm is in a tough fight here versus the Hydra. Very close, awesome game here between these two players. Very, very good stuff here in the fourth quarter. But the Black Guard are holding pretty firm. Femir, Bail Femir Balefiend's in there as well, going against some of these guys. This uh, this Frost Room here having some problems, but is this other Frost Room looking to get a Breath Attack? Well, it says he's firing. Oh, no, what are you, oh, what's he doing? What's that Frost Room doing? Because Chill Santar is just going to heal through this. I, I think you need to time it more for an Alpha Strike. Oh, man, that's not good. Negative 29. That Frost Room's broken. It is a broken man. I think he's, oh, he's probably going in because the Balefiend's kind of stuck in combat, so he's just like kind of like, okay, I got to throw everything at the wall now. But uh, here you can see that the Frost Worm doing its thing, and it looks like the chilliest of Sontars, everyone's favorite piece here, is going to be claiming victory and 3-0 here in the series. Maybe? No. That's it. So Falcon wins for the day, a 3-0, uh, carrying the legacy of the Flying Taco to victory. Well played there. Yeah, they're both frostbiting each other. But yeah, it was a really cool build from Kark, for sure.
Um, but, you know, the chieftain getting thrown away was really rough. Um, like, he basically just died in halberds. Like, he didn't have to. He would have been, like, a game changer there in the late game, just kind of picking off loose infantry. So, guys, well played. Falcon is the champ for the day. Doing for today. GG, Kark. Great games. Thank you both. <laughs> Kark says Falcon's OP. Because we had two games earlier. All right. So you guys got to see a handful of games. Quick battle sniping time. All right. <laughs> GG. All right. So there you have it. That's going to conclude the uh, best of seven portion of the stream for today. Hold on. All right. So come snipe me on quick battles if you guys want. I'm a little bit rusty right now, but you know what? I'm uh, I still this old dog still has bite. Yeah, Wolfric would have been way better too. Like Hunter of Champions to slow Malekith, plus also the uh, the ship ability to kill Black Guard. Yeah, the drag the dragons did have a little bit of a, a traffic. Hey, oh we got Sacred Mist. Yeah, he was actually talking about playing me. Perfect. All right, so uh, as far as this goes, who do I want to play? Let's play the mighty. They're arising from the deep. This would be fun. Do I need a screen blocker? Probably not. I'll put one up just for good measure. Blocker. Where art thou, squig block? There you go. Get you going. Get you going here. A little, little screen blocker action. All hail the mighty. Wookiees rising from the deep with tattered sails and incredible tales. We're calling in the deep. <laughs> I'll hail the Wookiee. Sorry, I've been singing this song like I'm, it's just stuck with me. I feel like I have to do it. All right, uh, Shagoth Strand. I'm actually not terribly familiar with what this map looks like. I can't quite remember what this bad boy looks like. So anyways, let's go ahead and start putting the, putting the army together here. Uh, yeah, I can play Britannia next game. I'll probably do like two games, so I'll, I'll I'll put together some of that, some of that goodness here. We're all, we're hailing the mighty right now, guys. We're trying to at least. Oh yes, it's gonna be good. You know, I'm kind of burnt out on Skaven. I played them a lot, and I kind of was like, yeah, they're really good. Don't get me wrong, but. All right, so we'll get this goodness here. This sweet, sweet goodness. I hate pirates, but let's see. You'll be fine, dude. You'll be fine. You gotta, you gotta believe, man. You gotta believe. <laughs> if you don't have a bloated corpse, get more than 50 kills. Oh, dude, I don't know if a bloated corpse, I, I'm pretty sure this is like an open field-ish map. So I don't know how that would actually go. My old build is just not against these guys. It's just not functional anymore. So, because uh, you know all the uh, the nerfs to Vampire Coast really it did. They're still one of the best factions out there, but it really changed the way you play with them. So, um, get some of those guys. Ah, oh, yes. Alrighty. All right. So this is a uh, this is a little something something. I think it has potential. We'll try it out. We'll, 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 we'll see if we like the way we'll see if we like the way we look. Hmm. <laughs> All right, he's ready. I am ready. I might want to change one more thing actually. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, those guys are pretty good. All right, let's see how this goes. I don't burn out on YouTube. I just, I burn out on playing like factions a lot because they're, you know, don't ever listen to me turn. I just troll in chat. <laughs> All right, chat, no worries. I'm not muted, no. I was just picking my army. Yeah, so it's pretty good. It's, it's a nice little army. Yeah, Aerocrastic has a really good point. Like you gotta like the aesthetics of an army as well. 
it really it really helps you get into it like like i love the way vampire coast looks like in their theme it's just so cool and you know i i, I spent a lot of time playing them and you know it uh you know it did its thing it did its thing but for starter factions i actually think lizard men are really good lizard men are very very solid oh oh does he need more time he said he was ready so i think i think we're we're all set there I brought a special treat for you guys. Oh, God. Oh. A special treat. Just for chat, which may actually lose me the game. But, but you know, at least we go out like a true hero of the people. I would love to do quick battle streams more often. And perhaps if I'm ever to a point where my hand's like 100% better someday, or at least like functional, I could do them a couple times a week. But I really like casting games. It's very fun when there's like a tournament kind of situation. Oh yeah, I know this map. Okay. So what he's probably going to do is have a bunch of shades. Shades are just like super good. They can like creep up on you and just, uh, you know, make you make you all uncomfortable like. Uh, Vanguard options. He doesn't really have too many good ones here. I mean, yeah, I don't think so. So anyways, we'll have stuff back there just in case he does. So as far as army goes, we have, uh, it's pretty mixed forces. Let's go ahead and hide you guys in the trees. Got over there for now. Great. It's a little bit, it takes a little bit of getting used to also playing in the standing desk. So we'll put the Tide of Skilled here in the center. Put these guys in group one and get you guys over here on the far side. It's going to be our our main glorious battle line. But against elves, you really have to have a lot of buffering in your formation because if you're uh, if you're too kind of, uh, you know, bunched up. And yeah, he's probably going to have Dark Riders trying to like get in and just, you know, cause problems. All right, so here we go. So Luther Harkin will be in group two. He's going to be trundling out and... These guys can actually be group five. They don't need to be a priority group. Um, Orngulls are going to be in like deep reserve, just like kind of on the wings, because uh, you don't want them too close to the elves in case there's a, uh, in case there's freaking uh, you know shades and other things like that causing problems. Our caster can be back here. He can be in group five as well for now. It doesn't really matter too much. And we do have a bloated corpse, so uh, I brought it for you guys. Hopefully my opponent's not stream sniping me. Yeah, we we brought the bloater. Shetland Apache, thank you, dude. No, the bloated corpse is the treat. We're going to have a really deep offset, um, freaking, uh, whatever those things are called. Bloated Corpse will be there, um, so let's get the Hounds. The Hounds are going to be in, like, respective control groups because it's very, like, important. So we'll put Luther in one, we'll put you in three, so two. He, he might have both throwers, too. It's something something to kind of uh, think about here. Four with these Hounds. Yeah, I mean, my opponent could do a Shade a fa shade Vanguard behind me. So we'll, we'll put some Felbats back there just to kind of check. And uh, Morgul's are here. These dogs can start over here as well. I just need to make sure like there's no shenanigans. And basically, Luther has to fly out like and scout a little bit. Um, as far as his army size, it's somewhat elite actually. So yeah, I would I would imagine shades. Although I, I've never played this gentleman, I'm sure. I, I've, I've heard he's quite good. So um, so we'll get to see. The bloated corpse may be the thing that cost me cost me a little bit, but uh, let's put let's put bloody here. Six, and then mortars can be in seven. We got halberds protecting those guys, which uh, is going to be good. Got to stay on top of that, though, for sure. All right, is he ready? You too. Let's have some fun, man. Oh, ho, ho. let's stretch those feetsies. No, I have a bloated corpse. It's right here. It's in the trees. It's, it's waiting. It's, it's hailing the mighty. All right, so let's ready up. Let's get those mortars on some decent targets. Move up the main wall for some buffering. All right, cool. So, yeah, it doesn't look like there's any cheeky vanguards, but he does have a lot of stuff over here. So let's go ahead and get our gun line going here. You guys going here, here, and the mortars can start shooting at the witch elves here. Which I actually like the witch elf pick. I think that's kind of cool. All right, so the fell bats can go ahead and kind of start creeping over here. Luther's going to do his thing as well. And yeah, fighting's underway. Here we go. So dogs, let's get you guys kind of creeping up and around here. Get you guys kind of creeping over here as well. We're probably going to have to use you guys defensively. And Luther is a... Uh, yeah, we can start shooting some of the sisters here. Oh, there's the shades. Okay, I was wondering where the shades were. Great, so let's go ahead and target you and uh, target you. All right, Luther's going to fall back now. We have to watch out for the flank pressure coming in because it's going to be a pretty heavy little overload. So let's go ahead and turn you guys about face. You guys here. Luther just keeps juking and the bloated corpse. Oh, we're going after these dark riders for sure. All right, great. So we're doing our thing so far. We're getting some okay damage on these guys. And the uh, these guys, I think we have some dogs here that can actually come and kill these. Okay, good. So Luther, he can just go fight the Harpies for now, because there's not too many good targets for him. Let's pull back. Actually, yeah, we can engage here, engage here. And let's go ahead and shoot some of these Harpies. And the Morngulls can go ahead and sweep up into the front line a little bit. Actually, I don't know. Let's get the Morngulls peeling the Harpies off the artillery pieces. 
is going to be good. So some collapsing on the front line, not terribly devastating, but let's go ahead and get these dogs up and around the side. Felbats are uh, fighting Felbats, which is okay. And these dogs actually got caught up a little bit, but no problem. So let's get the dogs going. It's going to be pretty important we shut those down. Luther is still fighting here, having a good old uh, jolly time. Let's go ahead and taunt these guys. Harpy should be breaking here, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to get in to his artillery pieces with those dogs. Those ones can do their thing here. And the black spot can just start shooting these guys if they want to. Great, so mortars are actually being attacked a little bit, so let's go ahead and do this. And uh, Luther can get an invocation if he wants to. I mean, yeah, we're going to need to drop some summons to kind of uh, stop the advance here. Great, so we got both those offline. These Morgals are kind of cleaning up shop here. Luther up in the sky is good, so we're going to kind of switch Luther onto the uh, Supreme Sorcerers here and see if we can get some picks. Get you going, you going here, and we'll go ahead and taunt these guys, which is going to be good. So yeah, we were able to get some artillery pieces, so one of them is like fully offline. And then now we can go ahead and attack the, uh, the Shades and company here. So this mortar, we need to keep shooting at these guys. Yeah, we need to be careful here. That was actually really sloppy. So we'll go ahead and power siphon here. We get a nice juke, though, at the last second, which is which is good. Warmgold's able to clean up there, so let's get them kind of piling in here. Get you guys piling in here. Get these zombies back here, and the black spot is pretty much falling. Man, that, that damage coming in there is really, really good. All right, so let's go ahead and attack. We'll go ahead and power siphon you. See if we can get in. Shades are about to be compromised by the doggies. And the Morngulls and company can kind of pile in as well. All right, so if Luther can actually get some good damage here... Let's go ahead and drop some zombies to help out. Luther, just keep going. Get the halberds going. Luther needs to go there. Morngulls need to kind of try and pin her in because we're actually in a bit of a tight situation here. Let's get you guys going. Mortars, company. Yeah, he's doing good. His build's really good. Yeah, so if we can get the Supreme Sorceress, maybe. So we're going to kind of pin her in here. And we can't heal, unfortunately, because leadership is a little bit tattered on this guy. So we're going to pull back here and see if we can get some value there. All right, so the halberds kind of cleaned up a little bit, actually. And the Supreme Sorceress is... Uh, we're trying not to get Rampage here. She's shaken, not stirred. This is a, a good little blob for us, but the problem is the Shades are online, so they're just going to kill us. And I don't know where these Felbats got into them, but yeah. We're, we're trying to fight here. Good build for sure for my opponent. I think I needed some Depth Guard, like something to uh, really chew through his forces. All right, so let's go ahead here. Oh, Luther's Rampaged. He's, I'm so weak. Felbats, I, I can't hold any longer. I'm so weak. <laughs> That was really my opponent played really well. He he did good for sure. Oh man, we needed to get that supreme sorceress though. Her cackling and getting away from us was not good. All right, so let's go ahead and attack these guys and get you guys going in as well. I mean, maybe if the Morngulls can kind of like surge back here with the Felbats, there's still some hope, but it's, it's certainly very slim. All right, so we've gotten on those guys and these guys. Okay, the elf the elf line is just completely broken. So let's go ahead and start chasing here. You never know with Vampire Coast. They're very strong, so it's worth the scrap to the bitter end. Let's get the Halberds kind of... Oh, man, we still have a shit ton of zombies. What does he have left? I mean, not that much, really, actually. All right, so let's get you guys going after them. You guys go after them. Zombies need to... Zombie. Oh, we got army losses! I didn't... Nah. I think we deserved it. His lord is still alive. Yeah. We tried. We tried so hard and got so far, but I should have put maybe put more pressure on the shades. GG, well played. Great game. He did really good. Yeah, the bloated corpse didn't do anything either, but that's not why we lost. Come on, let's be real here. Uh, coast lost. It was it was because of my my control. Yeah, <laughs> our Lord fails us. Don't worry, it was a warm up game. Yeah, I needed. I think I needed some depth guard and things like that. But anyways, we'll jump into another game. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it back here. Taco Bell in for more bloat. Oh, please don't do that to me. All right, guys, sniping time. I'll do one or two more matches. We'll see. We'll see. GG indeed. He played really well. Uh, I am. I liked his build. It was cool. It was gangster. And uh, yeah. So we're playing Wingman. Not sure who this is, but. So who do we want to play here? So he's playing Chaos. What's a fun matchup for Chaos? Let's go Lizardman. This is a build I used uh, the other day when I was practicing with Arrow, and I think it's pretty good. So I'm going to try it here, and you guys can let me know what you think. The Wingman. Uh, yeah. Okay. So be it. So be it then, Bob. So yeah, we're, we're going to come in with a, a very fun build. I can assure you. You guys, this one this one's very, very fun. So we'll get you... The mighty, the mighty will indeed be hailed. Although last game they certainly weren't. <laughs> bring some, bring me some scraps. The lizard orbital 
bombardment. Perhaps so. I'm not. This build's a little bit different, but it has some like cool units in it that are, I would say, very unorthodox picks. So you guys are gonna get to see uh, see some neat stuff. A couple of these little bastards. And uh, oh, where's the last one I need? Yes. Good Anakin. Good. All right, build's ready. I'm, I'm eager to see how this guy deals with this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get pwned out of the basement. Who's the most OP race? No, dwarves are not overpowered by any stretch of the imagination. All right, I'm warmed up now, guys. I've taken my beating like a champion, and now it is time to exact revenge upon the world. Oh, let me stretch those feet too. Yeah, the shades are just so good against elves. I actually have a lot of problems with Vampire Coast against Dark Elves dealing with them. It almost makes me wonder if I should just go with like a regular gun line. We were able to get the bolt throwers for free, which was cool, or at least one of them. I probably should have used that one hound to uh, go after his bows and just let the other one kill the, uh, the two bolt throwers for free. Yeah, this build's pretty good though. I, th I think it, it, it has merit. It's, it's very, very dynamic. 12 Carnosaurs? No, no. Because that's the usual thing in this matchup actually is using like the big dinos to just freaking, you know, monster mash and just go fisticuffs. But uh, yeah, in this case, we're going to be doing something a little different. Valnir19 says, I see a bloated corpse. I donate. Thank you, Valnir. I'm sorry. I don't know if it did anything. It just kind of got like shreked. I just sent it after some like, I think it might have killed some Dark Riders, but I can't remember. There was like, I could have kept it in my main line, but then Shades would have picked it off. So I was like trying to hide it in the trees and things like that. The ROR Deck Gunners for Dark Elves. I have Shetland. They're not bad. Yeah, I used to use Deck Gunners. All right. This is actually a good map for what we're doing. I play 40K like twice a week. Oh, my feet are getting sore. I got, I got my Ergo mat coming today. All right, so it's kind of like, yeah, it's it's an interesting build for sure. So basically what we do is we like go like, it's it's a battlefield control build. So we go like super wide with a bunch of little like, like trolley lizards. Yes, good Anakin, good. And the Slon will be rolling dirty with them. Now from here, we have the Horned Ones who are gonna be in like a goon squad. We have an Ancient Salamander and we have the Colossodon Hunters and then we have the little Chameleons. We're gonna be poking and poking and a stroking. So let's get the horned ones here. Let's get the ancient salamander here. Colossodon hunters. And uh, we have the little skink chief in group six. And our main group can be a little bit offset in the back because we don't want to like give the chaos the fight too quickly, like the uh, the main fight. So yeah, we just do this. And uh, yeah, we can get a little supporting infantry unit over here on the flanks to just, just in case we need something. So basically we go and like harass with our chameleons and then our ancient salamander shoots their, their infantry. And uh, oh, the showdown's over, so tech. Yeah. Showdown's over. We're just we're, I'm just playing some ladder games for fun now. All right, so good luck, have fun. Seems to be quite quite a quiet lad, my opponent. He could have a vanguard here, but if he does, it's going to be kind of bad news bears, I think. So we'll we'll put the Colossus and Hunters right on top of them just in case. All right, great. So it's definitely nice that he's a little bit kind of offset there in the back. So let's get everyone kind of moving up here. Ancient Salamander can come shoot at uh, some of those sweet sweet chosen with halberds, and these skinks need to move up as well. Skink Chief, we just need to look for some juicy targets. He has a horseman back here, but for the most part, we can start shooting some mirror guard. Like, screw it. Colossal Hunters can move up. Yeah, the horsemen are going to be the... Oh, ooh, give me that Chaos Sorcerer. Give me that. Give me that. All right, so I'm warmed up now. We're coming in hot. Uh, these are Chaos Warriors, but I want to get those chosen with Halberds here. Little Skinkies uh, are going to screen out those guys here. Get you charging in, and let's let's go get some let's go get some value. Let's go get some value, shall we? So we're gonna go in here, and if he wants to fight, we'll go straight up. Oh, I shouldn't have popped Toad Rage. Okay, that's fine. Well, anyways, some light skirmishing going on. We should be able to deal with the horsemen here, so let's kind of keep shooting. Salamander's doing its thing. Let's pull these guys back, and uh, just get ready to kind of uh, collapse. Now, a lot of people underestimate these uh, these 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 guys up in the sky here, but they uh, they can certainly do pretty well. So getting some value so far, we're okay. And uh, Horn Ones can kind of charge into the Mirror Guard. We'll cycle charge here. Ancient Salamander's going. And look at the look at these guys. It's it's insane the damage output they have. Yeah, we'll net. Uh, we don't need to net them down per se. Horn ones are charging in. We're doing our thing here. Let's get these skinks kind of scooting up as well. And you can actually go uh, lend your hand to this fight against the Chaos Sword. But yeah, those guys really really strong. They they can do a ton of work. So basically just cycle charging and like hammering our opponent, and uh, you know putting them in awkward situations while the Salamander shoots him. 
And the sorcerer, the chaos sorcerer lord actually wins that fight, which is interesting. So let's go ahead and net him in place. While we continue to do our thing, let's go ahead and shoot here. Pull back these guys and uh, keep shooting here. And all right, so yeah, we're, we're back in business here. Now he's broken, so we can just chase him off the battlefield. So let's go ahead and drop a blood statue out of his fight on just some of these uh, halberds that are scooting up here. Horned ones are doing good. We need to get the skinks kind of shutting down these guys down though. That's not, that's not great for us to be taking that. We don't want to rampage either. Cycle charge in here, pull back the salamander, blood statue out of his fight, and down goes his lord. All right, so great, so far so good. And uh, let's drop a banishment right here. That should be pretty good timing. Horn ones need to pull back. You guys need to pull back. Cycle charge here. And uh, yeah, the banishment we got. Ooh, baby, look at that banishment. All right, I got the rust off last game. I'm playing I'm playing good now. All right, great. So shoot the halberds here. Let's go here. Horny boys, just kind of keep piling in. Let's get the skinks kind of shooting them as well. And uh, is there any other witchcraft we want to use? Not really. We got some like loose chaos warriors in the flank, but I don't think we need to worry too much about those. All right, horn ones doing great. Those guys are all broken off, so let's pull them back. These guys need to come back as well. Let's chew into them. And uh, we're doing pretty good here. So let's actually pull them out and isolate some of the weaker stuff. This is like a challenge to just not use my my, my main battle line here. Salamander's doing its thing. Salon's just being thick and proud. And uh, all right, so let's get you guys to go over here and go take out those Chaos Warriors if we can. And you, little buddy, can just uh, yeah, sh just shoot some Halberds. Shoot some, shoot, shoot some Chosen. That's A-OK. -okay. Great, so let's farm up here. Keep shooting the uh, the elite troops if we can. Horn ones should be able to finish them off. And over here we got that going. So let's go ahead and drop a bonus time warp on them. Just gonna make them hit pretty hard. And the little skink bastards just kind of keep shooting here. Slon can. I actually don't mind blobbing up on uh, my guys a little bit. Great. So we should be able to mulch those guys. He had some horsemen come back in. Surprised those mirror guard are holding that firm. All right. So now I think it's time to move up the main force here. So let's go ahead and actually just form a battle line here. Slon, keep waddling away. Keep shooting down the elite troops. And here, have we killed those Chaos Warriors yet? Man, they're really holding quite well. Man, they're they are not dying, these, these, these Chevron Chaos Warriors. All right, so let's go ahead and drop some uh, jabs here, jabs here. Let's get the uh, cohort of Sotek coming in. Let's keep taking apart these guys here. And uh, yeah, I mean, we have another banishment coming up relatively soon, which is good. We could do that. Um, I could use a net, not really necessary, to be honest. Uh, so let's pull these guys over here. We have a pretty good alpha strike potential on this uh, this blob. So we'll get the toad fighting now. Drop shield the old ones, which will help a little bit with the damage. Pull back the skinks. Shoot here. Salamander can shoot into this blob here. The mirror guard is still going strong, man. All right, aura pretzel. And uh, let's go ahead and drop some javelins on you guys. Halberds don't have shields, obviously, so we want to go after them. Go around the back. Keep shooting those guys. And uh, any leadership issues, really? They're, everyone's confident. We should be able to shrek this formation pretty good here. All right, so yeah, now we send in our final waves. I think this build's pretty good, honestly. And you know, despite what you guys may think about, you know, the skill level of my various opponents, I've had pretty good success with it against like high level, high level guys. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and fan those guys out. Pull you guys back. You guys do that. Little skinks can. Just go throw some throw, throw some bombs at those guys, and we'll get you guys going in there as well. All right, great. So let's go ahead and dogpile in here. Uh, we'll drop a banishment on, on those guys. Doesn't look like they're moving. I think they're just kind of waiting waiting for their imminent doom here. Down they go. Oh, Falcon's commentating on my play. Oh man. All right, one more game, guys. One more game. So yeah, that build's pretty good. It's, I mean, I wouldn't say his build was optimal, but it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good against a multitude of chaos builds for sure. All right, last game, last game of the stream. It's perfect timing. It's like right at the two-hour mark. GG to my opponent. Oh, feet, feet don't fail me now. Get me through one more game. One more game here. Man, this guy's got an intense name here. He's blind and he has a horseshoe. Oh my god, he's got like a scary avatar too. It's like some guy with white eyes. All right, so rejoice for a knight of Bretonia shall be your shield. Yeah, that was a clinical game for sure. Ah, oh. oh, I don't like this matchup. Ugh. I wanted to. I wanted to do good, like good versus evil, you know. Can't, can't you not play Empire? Okay, I guess we'll fight against Empire. It's like fighting. It's like fighting your, like family, you know. 
Oh, do I need a screen blocker? I probably do. GG indeed. Well, Dawi versus Empire is kind of like, I don't want to do that to my opponent. It's not a fun matchup. Um, I could switch. You guys want Bretonia? You guys want Bretonia? I think Bretonia could be fun. For the lady! Everybody loves Bretonia. They're just so awesome. They are awesome indeed. Oh, you guys want this guy in Team Greece? Well, maybe you should... Yeah, you probably guys want to, probably want to see how the game goes first, right? Oh no, we don't want to have this guy. Alright, so we're still deciding on the army. He ready it up pretty quick on me, actually. What choices do we have? What would we like to run? What Bretonian army would be complete without glorious peasants? You know? Oh shit, did I take the Sword of Crone? Oh shit! Damn it! I forgot the Sword of Crone. I was like, what should I spend my last money on? How about we get some peasants instead of one of the best items in the game? Oh my god. I was going to leave the lobby because of his ready up too, just to get more time, but man, oh, that's frustrating. That's like one of Lewin's best things. Whatever, it's okay. Yeah, those, those, those pterodactyls took out that Chaos Lord for sure. Well, uh, yeah, he, he has a better chance of winning, especially now that I forgot to bring the Sword of Caron, but I mean, it's not the end of the world. Oh, I have a screen blocker up, don't I? I gotta change. God damn it, that pisses me off so much. By the, lady. the brain ain't what it used to be. You know? Got some peasant archers up in here. We got some men at arms. The one area where we should have a pretty good situation is actually the uh, infantry fight. We have a uh, pretty good quality there. Peasants greater than a sword? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Who, need, who needs a fancy sword? You guys, you guys raised some really valid points. But now we have a, a ton of extra peasants, which are just going to be just haggard and just getting rowed down by probably like friggin' Empire Knights. Alright, um, got you. Let's get you in the main force. Three and four. Five and six. I like me some mounted Yemen. They're always pretty good. Especially against Empire, like getting into gun lines and like cannons and things like that. Like people lapse at all. Oh! Okay, so five should be over there. I usually always put like, yeah, I like, yeah, never mind. It's a weird thing I was going to explain. All right, so we'll see how this goes. Yeah, the blocker was fan made by an uh, excellent gentleman over on the Twitch hair. Sound the clarion horn. Let's actually put these guys in guard mode so they keep shooting. All right, let's do it to it. Good luck to him. Oh. He says, good luck, have fun. Hey, uh, you know, maybe we can catch this guy. Did I leave? Don't don't troll me right now. Did I leave it up? No, okay, it's not up. Damn it, you guys. Trying to, like, make this hard for me here. All right, so, well, looks like we're going to have an uphill battle, that's for sure. Mounted Yemen can come around here. Just come around the back. Does he have any archers? No, he's going straight up Rohirrim as well. He's got demi four demis with halberds. Oh, my God. I think I kind of just want to like pull back down here a little bit and just have a fight down here. Because like fighting up in this hill is very awkward. And I have the archers, so... If we could like try and pull... God, the Sword of Crown would be so good right now. Because I have the archers, so I, I can just start poking him with uh, my, my bows. We'll probably use Mounted Yeoman to kind of just chase, chase him off the battlefield here a little bit. So what does he have? He's got Volkmar the Grim and a Deathcaster, so yeah, Death's pretty good. Death is not bad at all. 
So we can kind of like position over here, I think, a little bit. And then we can start like shooting our bows up at the high ground here. So he's got spearmen with shields. Infantry fight will pretty heavily favor us. One thing is we didn't really bring any spears. That was probably a mistake. I should have brought like a couple just like chaff spears to help out. I'm, I'm tempted to charge these guys and see if he's paying attention. We'll see. We'll, we'll test the waters a little bit. So he's got some swordsmen here in the back. Yeah, he, he's watching. It, this is good though because it's just buying time for us to like relocate. I, I didn't want to fight on the hill because I want more efficient like space for my archers. And as soon as we break anything, the Mounted Yeoman will just chase him off the battlefield. No threats as it pertains to uh, to missiles, so we have pretty much freedom as we want it here. I mean, he can he can spirit leech us, which is fine. Lewin heals himself, so I'd rather he do that than use his winds of magic to uh, kind of go after other threats here. So let's uh, let's harry him a little bit, kind of stay close. Yeah, and I forgot the lion shield too. Awesome stuff. That's like so good against spirit leech. I was just in a rush. All right, so let's get ready to party. Louis coming in. We're just gonna let him heal and save our ones of magic. Yes, we're like vultures just waiting in the wings. Why are they in melee mode, those guys? Oh, we put them in, yeah, the wrong mode. Okay, that's pretty funny. All right, those are spear moon shields. Um, we could start scooting up a little bit and uh, let's go ahead and get our quest knights here and here. These guys here and here, just kind of waiting. <laughs> I have the high ground, Anakin. Don't try it. So let's get up a little bit. We're teasing a little bit. We're teasing. If I could actually get the Yeoman on his caster too, that would be really, really good. So these are spearmen. We definitely want to be shooting... Uh... No, let's go this way a little bit. He is, he is taking control of the hill! Sigmar's sons are an okay target. I'd like to obviously shoot the Demogriff Knights if I can. Oh my god, is he going to be one of those guys? Oh my god, did he just be one of those calf? What? Thank you. Thank you. That is that is actually great news for us. So we're going to shoot the Demis now a little bit. Like get, get whatever freebies we have. He has no healing, so like every morsel of damage we do is actually very, very valuable. And these guys can just shoot the, uh, the swordsman here. And let's go ahead and rotate our cab over to get ready for his uh, his charges. We'll pull in here. Well, the Buna certainly did break our guys, which is fine. We'll get the uh, charge here. Although it's a little bit of a awkward charge, but we'll go in with Louis. And our state troops should actually be able to... Or not state troops, but our, our Bretonian peasants should be able to win a lot of these engagements here. Let's pull you guys down. So, okay. So here he comes. He's going to want to get a charge here. So let's just throw some chaff out in the way. Let's get some freaking peasants going as well. And these guys can just come over here. Luan is back. He's safe. He's happy. Questing Knights can... Uh, we just need to just kind of wait and see where he goes. We can hammer into these guys with one group for now. Let's get the archers and just keep shooting at Demogriff Knights. And now we can pull these guys back. And then we should be able to counter charge him. Let's charge here. Let's charge here. Let's get Luan going as well. Let's get a big fat heal right here. All right, so we're going in. We got stand your ground pops. Got all these going. Let's get them. Just kind of look for any opportunities to pick things if we can. Let's get you guys kind of pushing in. Quest Knight's doing pretty good, for sure. We're really melting some of these Demogriff Knights. And our archers should be able to put up some decent value against the other ones. Um, Shield of Thorns here is probably actually going to be quite good. So basically, we want to pull back with the group that overextends a little bit. And the Mounted Diamond and actually a decent distraction card effects. He's taking a lot of casualties during this. Great, so let's get you guys pushing here. These Yeomen can just chase off these Swordsmen. State troops are kind of buckling. Yeah, we have a good fight here. This is good. So I might want to pull back with these guys. The archers are still shooting in, and uh, they're starting to wear down some decent targets. That's funny. Lewin's going as well. He's, he's a little bit pit, kind of surrounded right now, but we'll drop an earth water here, which will hit a lot of stuff. Lewin can pull back and out, and let's get some peasant mobs going here. Peasant mobs. Let's get the damsel fighting his caster, which is going to be pretty funny. Okay, so one of his demigriff knights is almost broken. And let's pull you guys back. Let's pull you guys back a little bit if we can. And just get some, like, chaff kind of filling up the void there. Great. Loon's actually a little bit trapped up, which is okay. It's not the end of the world. Yeoman. Just chase down the scraps if we can. Loon, get back. And then we can counter charge here. This is going to be a good counter charge. As long as Loon lives, we'll be okay, I think. God, Fane Chantress would be so useful right now. 
Ah, we've got you. The peasants, the peasants of Bretonia arise. So now that he's like kind of committed to that pit fight, that blob, I think with healing will be pretty good there. So we'll just drop a fat heal here. And now we can go try and snipe his caster. That should be good. He does have some demis nearby, but hopefully we can get a couple of decent blows here. The archer fire, of course, is helpful. And we will eventually win most of the infantry fights. So Lua needs to get out here. We'll pop stand your ground to kind of buff those guys up. We do have we do have the bodies. Damsel, let's get her going over here as well. I'm tempted to drop a shield of thorns here. To just kind of keep the, the physicality of this battle going. Let's pull back some men at arms here. Not able to get as much damage as I'd like. It's a pretty close fight. I mean if I had Sword of Crone, I think it'd be it'd be pretty solid for us, but. Alright, let's go ahead and break those spears, make sure they don't come back here. Battle pilgrims can go break you guys, men at arms. Alright, getting the caster here is pretty big. Now, questing knights are still pretty good. The companions are holding firm. Our archers are, uh, you know, certainly making a difference. So let's get those peasants up and around the back. Get some men-at-arms kind of pushing in as well. So now we can try and goon Volkmar, actually. No, we gotta, we gotta keep going for the caster. Actually, he's still alive. Let's pull back the damsel, pop the power stone. Get you guys going, get some peasants intercepting those state troops. And how are we doing on targets? Okay, those demis are broken, so let's go ahead and switch on to another group here. Alright, so looks like his caster is broken, so we can actually chase it with, uh, with our own guy. I want to get peasants around the back to just, like, muck up his forces. And I think a big earth blood here is, is very, very timely. I might miss Luan, but that's okay. Both more of the Grim will lose to uh, to Luan as well. I think we're pulling ahead. It's very, a very, very ugly fight. Sword of Crone is, like, literally game-changing in a situation like this. The fact that we don't have it is, is not very, is, is pretty bad. But I think we just have enough bodies that we can, like, grind them out here. I might want to pull back my knights, actually, because they're getting kind of beat up. And then we'll just kind of, like, you know, keep playing our, our game here with all our infantry and use our archers to pepper them down. Yeah, you can see, like, a lot of the Demogriff knights are really taking a beating here. Luin is uh, in a fight here, but actually a bit of a tough fight. Did we get his caster off the battlefield? Almost. Okay. Okay, so let's go up around the back. Let's get you peasants kind of piling in there. And we pull ahead. For the lady! Come on. Give us that. Give us that goodness! God. Aha! The Knights of Bretonia shall be your shield. Brett's blob. No sword of Corone. Yeah, Questing Knights trade really well. Aerocrastic taught me that. Um, with, with Demogriff Knights. Yeah, I mean, we won the infantry fight, and then from there we just had more shit in the blob, and nobody wanted to pull out, so. <laughs> that was so janky, that battle. Oh my god. Well, guys, at least we won two and lost one. Not a bad record uh, for today. That first game was so bad, though. God, I played so bad. That haunts me to this moment. Yeah. The, the gooning of the, the Deathcaster was good, too. A couple questionable things, though, like the Buna on the Yeoman. That must have been a misclick. I, I don't know. Like, Buna on my companions or anyone else would have been the game changer. Yeah, the peasants shielded the knights. Arwar peasants? Yeah, why why don't they exist? Like the holy farmers of, <laughs> of something. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm off for now. Thank you so much for joining on the stream. I'm going to go uh, hang out with my smoking hot lovely wife. And special thanks to Valnir, Shellen Apache, Lee, Gangster Moo Crew with the Fat 100, King Agazal, Nutter Forever, King Agazal, Mr. Mosier for the 20, Snuffleupagus, which is a great name, and Khalid for the very generous donations on today's stream. And congratulations to Felcon for winning the uh, best of five. And also we had some really good games for us uh, with Taco and Kark before uh, he had to go. So perhaps that'll be a rematch we'll have at some other point. So thank you guys so much. It was a blast hanging out with you guys. Smash the like button before you leave. It's always helpful. And uh, I'll see you guys on the other side. All right. Cheers.